said, and I know that mommy must be paying really well and daddy for that school. Amen. Uh, people have been saying, Black said, are you not going to have one more? I said, no, I'm okay. Amen. In this Lagos, I'm part of where I live in Lagos. God bless you. Uh, I love the way you, your boldness and confidence. All right, ladies and gentlemen, but you all know, just like she said, today we are here to celebrate God's faithfulness in the life of our father, Barista Loki on Yemai Gede. We are here to uh, celebrate God on his behalf. And please, by the special grace of God, in a short while, uh, when he's ready, we'll be welcoming him in. And uh, we'll just here basically just to thank God and have fun, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so please, I, I need to say this. I know we are, I think, uh, in case we need to use the convenience, um, when you go outside, he will be directed. And um, there's, no, there's, no, there's not going to be any case for emergency, but I think we have the main exit uh, directly, my opposite. And in case you are here, uh, you've brought bags and uh, your belongings, your personal effects, and you need to go out. And maybe you don't really know who is sitting, is sitting next to you. Uh, please, you could just do well enough just to go out with whatever you want, whatever you have brought in. Then when you are coming in, uh, you, you're coming with those things. Uh, I've, just, I've gone for events and you hear people sharing testimony that, wow, I got a souvenir. What kind of souvenir? They say phone. What did you see? He said, I saw it on the table. So ladies and gentlemen, so that another person will not use your phone as souvenir. Ladies and gentlemen, please, we just have to relax, uh, sit back and just enjoy the presence of God. Here we have, we have everything taken care of. And that was why at the beginning I was asking us, if there's anything you need, uh, please just let us know. Even if it is money, let us know. Amen. We are here to do giveaway. Amen. Unfortunately, I can't give anything away because I've already given my life to Christ. Amen. So I can't give anything away. And we have DJ Bizu. DJ Bizu, are you ready? Can you just give us something? Something to just whet their appetite. <laughs> I'm in love with you for real. But some of the ones you selected, you came to seal the deal. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for, because we know many of us who might want to go back to, to uh, today's activity, so we want to try as much as possible to run with time. And that's why at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we are all here today, uh, I'll be unveiling um, the celebrant in a short while. But please, immediately you see him and his family uh, when they are dancing in, please just um, show them some love, just honor them. Uh, if you don't mind, you could just be on your feet. And in case you are having issues with standing, I say receive, receive healing now in Jesus' name. So we'll just celebrate them, uh, please, while they will dance too and just have their seat. And all right, ladies and gentlemen, please, at this point in time, I'd like to unveil the one we are celebrating today. Uh, he's a man of God, and of course, we know that he's a legal uh, luminary. He's a man that God has helped. And when you see him, you don't even know that, yes, this is the man we are talking about. He's full of humility. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the one I'm talking about that we are celebrating today, uh, I, I don't know, he's not inside yet, but I don't know if he will still remember. 
Uh, my first encounter with him, my life and ministry never remained the same. Uh, when he comes here, I want him to be seated while I'll be sharing that testimony. But at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome the one we are celebrating today. Ladies and gentlemen, please, if your hands are not so heavy, please, can you put your hands together for Barista Loki Oyema Gede. Round of applause for our barista, even as we are celebrating God's greatness upon his life. At this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to hand you over to the ministry of DJ Bizu. Please, may let you see, Barista, please. You know, in court, we rise. Amen. Let's just rise. Hallelujah. As you rise, the Lord will raise you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Is it band or DJ? So, please, we just make, we just make, uh, we just make do well enough to just leave the aisle, even as uh, the celebrant and his family members will be dancing in. Uh, I don't know the protocol for today. I don't know if we are permitted to spray, uh, but please, in case we are permitted to spray, why you want to spray them? Because we, I think we still have time to dance. Please just spray on the dance floor. Uh, don't really spray them on the forehead. I don't know how today is going to be like. And in case you, you want to do transfer and you don't have his account number, I can give you my own. Amen. Thank you. DJ Bisu. As we wait for the arrival of Barista, the one we are celebrating today, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate Barista Lucky or oh, my get there, ladies and gentlemen. Let's show him some love. I said Barista can dance. He said I'm joking. Can you see what I'm saying? Barista and Barista misses. All right. Eh, 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 eh. All right. Thank you, sir. Somebody praise somebody it. Somebody worship, somebody, somebody praise it. Somebody worship, somebody praise it. Somebody worship, somebody praise it. Somebody worship, somebody praise it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may have your seat. Let's put our hands together. Let's celebrate God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, DJ Bisu. Thank you very much. Mommy, well done, ma. Uh, mommy, are, are you really sure that it's up to 60? Uh, no, mommy, you are doing it nice. Oh, please, let's, let's, let's celebrate, mommy. Let's celebrate her. Let's celebrate her. Please, let's celebrate her. Wow. Wow, daddy, happy birthday, sir. We are glad that today has come, and we are trusting God that you will do 70, 80, 90 in the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you very much, sir. Uh, mommy, thank you. I uh, really, really have to say thank you. Uh, Daddy, please, can you just hold mommy? Just say, just uh, to, just to, yes, yes, amen. Let's, let's, uh, let's celebrate them. You know, because I'm hearing in my spirit that after now, it's going to be like a remix of honeymoon. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been told that the children are away. Amen. So, Daddy and mommy, hallelujah. You worship him in his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let's celebrate them, ladies and gentlemen. Let's celebrate them one more time. Uh, you know, when I was going through Daddy's profile, I saw that um, he loves basketball. And um, so I said, ah, Barista saw this thing long time ago that there will be a time, 2022, 
that Nigeria will not qualify for the World Cup. So he switched to basketball before it happened. Amen. Yeah. I remember I saw that and I said I must. I, I started following basketball because of you. Amen. I cannot come and wound myself because for I'm a Nigerian. I'm a Nigerian by birth, and I support us now. You see that I need Jesus. Amen. That's why you can't be in this country and not have Jesus. Amen. You may not live long. Hallelujah. You are supporting us now again. Nigeria Super Eagles. God will help us. Amen. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, we would like to take the opening prayer. And then I have an anointed man of God in the house that will take us through this opening prayer. It's someone that I respect so much. He's a man of God, a uh, husband of wife with many children, both biological children and uh, spiritual children. Ladies and gentlemen, if your hands are not so heavy, please, can we just put our hands together for Pastor uh, Romo Sele Aneto. A round of applause. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Shall we rise to pray? Jehovah, I de bube. Jehovah, I de bube. Everlasting Father, we worship you this morning. We exalt you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the omnipotent, the omniscient one, the King of kings, the creator of the heavens and of the earth, the rose of Sharon, the balm in Gilead, our healer, is our refuge and fortress, fortress and a very present help in trouble. Father, we thank you. We worship you this morning. And we exalt your mighty name. Thank you for the privilege of being here this morning, alive and well. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to celebrate your grace upon the life of your son, our brother Lucky Egidi. We say thank you, Almighty Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for bringing all of us here safely. Our confidence is in youth for today, and we ask direct every step of today's program in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask that you take control and take over tabernacle in our midst this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. As your word goes forth, let it go forth in power in the name of Jesus. Every expectation of the heart of your people here this morning, Lord, because we are in your temple. Lord, the thoughts in their hearts that is pain, we ask to meet them at the point of their need this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. At the end of today, we ask that you take all the glory and let the blessings be ours in the name of Jesus. We ask that, Father, Lord God, that every, frustrate every token of liars in the name of Jesus. Let them not be able to perform their enterprise here in the mighty name of Jesus. Again, we say, Father, the glory will be unto you and the blessings will be unto us in the name of Jesus. And I therefore declare this program open in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the people of God say, Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much, Pastor. A round of applause for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, that was a very worded and powerful prayer. Uh, the Lord bless you, sir. May he continue to increase you on all sides in Jesus' name. And in, even in the work that he has committed to your hands, may you go far in the name of Jesus. May you not be tired. Uh, you know, as we're just praying that prayer now, that may you go far. 
uh, it just dawned on me that it's not everybody that prays for you that you will go far to you will say amen amen hallelujah there was a time in my life uh, some years back I went to anchor an event on the island and you know that day I knew myself that I did well you know when you crack jokes and you were cracked yourself everywhere was you know everywhere was lighted and you know I was very happy and all of a sudden one guy just came to me and hugged me and said black saint you will go far I said amen he came back again and hugged me, you know, held me close to himself and said, you will go far. I said, amen. The second hugging that he held me, you know, I felt that some virtues left me. And I just remember that woman with the issue of blood. When he touched the hem of Jesus' garment, you know, Jesus knew that somebody touched him. And, you know, but I did not know. I thought it was anointing that was transferring. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was going again, the guys did like this to me. I did said, MC, you will go far. I said, amen. He said, you did well. I said, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there was no car at that time. Now it's not that I have a car, but I have something that we drive. So at times it drives me, at times I drive it. Amen. We both drive each other. Hallelujah. So I got to where we bought. Then I was living at Ojodu, Ojodu Beggar. This was VI. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to where we bought CMS. I entered. And the guy said, Conductor, where is your money? I checked my pocket. I was looking for my transport fare. That was when it dawned on me that what left me when I thought it was virtue is what my span prospect that left me. Amen. That guy moved my transport fare. That day I went far. Amen. I trekked from the island to Jodubega. I went far. Amen. So if anybody is saying you will go far, I say, say from a let's maintain some social distancing, say it from afar. Hallelujah. Amen. But we thank God today. And I quickly have to say this before we proceed. I know Barista, but I've forgotten. But sir, I know you've forgotten the first time I met you. Uh, you know, even till today, it's still like a dream. I went for an event, ladies and gentlemen. Please, can we just celebrate Barista? This man is a man of God, and he loves to, to change lives, but he doesn't show it. Very full of humility. I celebrate this, and I celebrate to my... I remember, you know, it was at an event, and he just called me and said, Black Saint, how did you come? I said, I came. He said, how? I said, I came, sir. Because he saw the way my shoes were dusty and everything. That time, I trekked. Amen. There was no money for a bike, and there was no car. He said, I should come to his house, and I got to his house, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he said it was um, a duplex. So he now went outside the balcony and said, I should look down. You know why he said, I should look down? I just remembered after Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was taken to, to that higher place. I said, look down. I was thinking maybe he was, saying, he was going to say, I should jump. Amen. But he next said, look down. What is that? I saw something packed, covered with trampoline. I said, sir, that thing looked like a car. I said, sir, do you want to do registration? He said, no. He said, that because I've seen that your life is fertile, I'm sowing into your life. I said, sir, is this your fine answer? Oh, you need to call your friend. He said, my wife's already here. Don't worry, fine answer. You know, I had to pinch myself. Abi, am I dreaming? Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I should go. You know, the guys at the gate didn't want to open the gate. He said, leave him. I have given him the car. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the first time and the only time in my life that I have driven a tear rubber car. You know where the problem started? They opened the gate and I zoomed off. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to my house, ladies and gentlemen, and I was honey for them to open the gate. No, sorry, there was no gate. It was face my face to apartment. Thou shalt not lie. Rapture can happen at any time. I don't want to miss it. There was no gate. But ladies and gentlemen, you know why up to today I've not finished telling the nylon? You know when you when you enter, you know, it's like a dream when you enter a new car for the first time. When I got to, I wanted to get down from the car. I didn't know whether to put the left leg outside first or the right leg. I was confused, amen. Ladies and gentlemen. How, while I was struggling to come out, that was when I just heard, oh boy, you know go go work today. I said, I dream, I did dream. <laughs> but like, daddy, my other name is Joseph. Amen. When I dream, it comes to pass. <laughs> daddy, and I know, even though if it's not new, daddy, give me to Kumbo. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's celebrate him. It was a dream. Amen. And I'm so happy I'm meeting for the first time today and I know my dream will come to pass in Jesus' name. How many of us have lovely dreams? How many of us have lovely dreams? You come to pass in Jesus' name. Let's celebrate my destiny helper. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mommy, I know you will concur. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. All right. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay. Okay. I quickly want to... Uh, DJ, please, can you just give us something just very light while I try to get some clarification? Hallelujah. do a cappella. Jesus, my don't be overwhelmed. Hey, open the memory. Butterflies in the belly of innocence. 
recognize and just change some seats now. I'd like to recognize this important personality uh, and I'd like to my ushers to just be at a lot even as we welcome them here so that they will join uh, uh, mommy and daddy. Ladies and gentlemen, please if your hands are not so heavy, please can you just help put those hands together for Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Bami Dele Abegude. A round of applause for our daddy. Uh, that is uh, I learned that that is our host. Amen. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. We celebrate you, sir. We celebrate you, ma. We celebrate you, sir. We celebrate you. If you are with mommy, please, the two of you can come. Uh, what the Lord has joined together, let no MC put asunder. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want anything that will affect my balance. Amen. It's not that I'm after balance. I live a balanced life. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let's celebrate, Pastor. We celebrate you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, Pastor. Uh, please, we quickly want Pastor. <laughs> Ero Mosele, our netto to join. Uh, and if you are here with Mommy Sadi Tov, you can actually come. A round of applause. Uh, a round of applause. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I love the prayer. You know, after praying the prayer, sir, I just felt like taking offering. Amen. But I said, no, don't take offering. Because I have offered myself. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, can you help me bring this up a little bit? Uh, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please, can we just put our hands together for God doing a uh, Hiagumuso? Eh hi gia muse. A round of applause. The barista. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. A round of applause. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, please, uh, this, please, if your hands are not so heavy, please, can we just put our hands together for Barista uh, God's Will Iyoke? A round of applause for Barista God's Will Iyoke. A round of applause for him. Where are you, sir? Miss. Okay. Okay, uh, please, uh, please, mommy, please join her, join him. Uh, let's celebrate uh, our mommy, and that is Mrs. Iyoke. A round of applause. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, ma. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please, if your hands are not so heavy, can we just put our hands together for Pastor Dairo? Pastor Dairo. I think we're going to need more chairs. Pastor Dairo. Is it Pastor and Pastor Mrs.? Or? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We celebrate you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, please, can we just put our hands together for Mr. Festus? Mr. Festus. Mr. Festus. Mr. Festus. Okay, okay please, can we just celebrate Pastor Alex? Pastor Alex. Pastor Alex. Pastor Alex, thank you very much. Uh, please, can we just put our hands together for Daddy Akindele? A uh, round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please don't be tired of clapping. Amen. You are not paying for it. Hallelujah. Some people don't even have hands. Amen. They don't have. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daddy. Daddy Akindele. Thank you, sir. Can I have an usher to help daddy to the front? Thank you. Thank you, daddy. 
Thank you. Let's celebrate, Daddy. Let's celebrate, Daddy. The Lord will continue to strengthen you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate, Daddy. Let's celebrate, Daddy. Let's celebrate, Daddy. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, as we have uh, people coming, we'll, we'll continue to do this. Uh, but please, at this point in time, we just want you to, we want to appreciate the presence of every single one in this hall. Please, can we just put our hands together for ourselves? Celebrate yourself. You are very, very important. And we know that today we wouldn't have been this glamorous if you were not here. But thank God that you are here. Is that the best you can do for yourself? It's not for me, it's for yourself. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, okay, we need to move now. But uh, please, the husbands, the fathers that are here, please, can we just celebrate our wives? Let's put our hands together for our wives. Amen. I, you know, wherever I go to, I celebrate my wife. I've been married for so long by special grace of God. By May third, my marriage will be eight years. It's been long. Amen. Eight years. What you pray? And as, ah, ah, eight years. Eight years. Ah, Father Lord. Eight years. So, and, and you know, I, there was an event I went to, and my wife was praying for me. He said, he said I should kneel down that morning, and I knelt down. I obeyed her. No, okay, I think it, it was a praise night, and I knelt down, and she prayed, and I remembered her. She said, this event you are going to will be a fruitful one. I said, amen. I did not understand. Amen. Fruitful one. Whereas those people, they were doing harvest night. I did not. I said, amen. And I was expecting money. After the event, ladies and gentlemen, as I was going to where I parked, the, the, the pastor in charge just looked at me. He said, Black saying, where is your car? I said, it's there. He said, I've told Sister Happiness and Sister Joy to follow you. I was thinking they were carrying envelopes. He said, I should look back. Ladies and gentlemen, I looked back. I saw them carrying basket full of fruit. Amen. Have banana. We have mango, oranges. Ladies and gentlemen, I was expecting a lot, but I got fruit. So when I was coming for this event, my wife said I should need that. I said, baby, start your prayer before I know I will need that or not. When she was going to say, may this event be a fruitful, I said, hold it. I don't want fruit today. Amen. I want money. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I'd like to welcome an anointed man of God, someone that we respect so much. He is actually our host today. He is a pastor of the house. Ladies and gentlemen, if your hands are not so heavy, please. Okay, before we do that, just hold on. Before we do that, I, I'll just, I, I will do this. Then immediately after the, we have the praise and worship session, he will just be coming up. And I'm talking about our father, our pastor. Ladies and gentlemen, please, can we just put our hands together for Pastor Dele Abegunde. Round of applause. I bet, sir, sir, still hold on, sir. You're not coming up yet. You're not coming up yet, sir. We are just celebrating the grace of God upon you. Please, let's put those hands together for Jesus. Uh, you know, if you know Pastor so well, you know that, yes, he's a man of God. And he's full of humility. We celebrate you, sir. We celebrate you, sir. Please, one more time, ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate this man of God. Thank you very much, sir. They say you cannot attract what you don't appreciate. And the right, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I'd like to hand over the mic to uh, the, the, the one that will usher us into that realm. We want to praise God. We want to thank God because we are here, because the Lord has made today possible. I'm so sure Barista will look back and see that many people that they started together, they are no more today. But we thank God. We are thanking God. We are not saying this just to, you know, to spy those people. We are saying this to thank God. Ladies and gentlemen, please, can we just put our hands together for Abim Bola Firebrand? A round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are doing that for God, you can do better. You can do better. It's worthy of our praise. It is worthy of our praise. There is none that can be compared to him. Hallelujah. We celebrate you, Jesus. I want to celebrate everyone here this morning. Thank you so much for coming. And I also want to celebrate dad. Happy birthday, dad. Happy birthday, mom, because it's your birthday too. I celebrate and thank you so much for having me. You can sit down, feel comfortable while we worship our maker. For we will enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We will enter his court with praise. We will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Hallelujah. He has made me glad. I am so glad. Oh, we will rejoice. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made us glad. He has made me glad. Oh, we will rejoice. 
Jesus na big man. Jesus na big man. Who no no one call him Sumobo? Yeah. Who no no one call him Sumobo? Big 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 Who no no one call him Sumobo? Who no no one call him Sumobo? Hallelujah! Can we give a lot of clap offering? Can you give a lot of clap offering? It's what? Are you ready to dance? I dance a lot, so you will see more of me dancing. So my mommies and my daddies, if you know you can, you know, shake your body, just move, you know. Hallelujah. Are you ready for me? Joyous celebration. Hallelujah! I got my boy, I got 
Judah, the Lord has spoke and everything was created. We stand in awe before you, Adiza, to say thank you to you on behalf of Loki Egede. We are grateful to you that this wonderful man was given to us 60 years ago, and you have been his God till today. And we are sure you will be his God till tomorrow. Father, we are asking Adiza that you speak to us. Let the entrance of your word give light. Let it give understanding to all of us. The glory is absolutely yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are welcome in Jesus' name. If you look at the program, we have 10 minutes for this session, and we will spend only 10 minutes. I read from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 17, verse 16. First Chronicles, chapter 17, verse 16. First Chronicles, chapter 17, verse 16. It says, and David the king came and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hither to? Among mankind, dead or alive, nobody had the fertility or has the fertility of the heart of gratitude that David had. David was a man that was full of gratitude to God to the extent that even when he was behind the ship in the field, God acknowledged that he was a man that praised him. And when they said David is a man after God's own heart, it was because he was always praising God, appreciating God. So, so the short exhortation is tied to a heart of gratitude. A heart of gratitude. A heart of gratitude. What we saw here, it was towards the end of the life of you know, David, and he was introspect, and he was looking at what God had made of his life. He had ruled for 40 years, and he had been extremely successful up till today, to the extent that the flag of Israel is a flag that has the star of David. He sat, and he was telling the Lord that, who am I? Who am I? Virtually all of us here, we have that story of David. When we look at where we are today and where God is taking us. But the only difference between David and all of us, or most of us, is that we are hardly ever grateful for what God is doing. We never, never, most of the time, think of what he had done yesterday. Think of what he has even done today since morning up till this hour. God has preserved us from all perils, and he's going to keep on preserving us. Those were the things that David saw. 
He will say, what is my house? Who am I? What is special about us? There was nothing special about Jesse, his father. Nothing at all. They were a non-entity in Israel. But there was a star who had the heart of God. A heart that appreciates God all the time. And I want to let you know that this thing passes down. Whatever you are made of is what your children most of the time will be made of. If you are a grumbler, it's likely your children will be murmurous. If you are a man that is ungrateful, nothing you appreciate, it's likely you are building a rebellious family. I want to read from the book of 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 54 to 57, especially 57. 1 Kings 8, 57. It's exhortation, so it's actually it's the word of God. It says, And the Lord, blessed be the Lord, I read from 56, so that I won't take too much time. It says, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he had promised. They had not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the mouth of, his, of Moses, his servant. The Lord our God be with us, as he was with our fathers, let him not leave us nor forsake us. That was a son of David, the man that appreciated God. The man that was always grateful. So he got it from his father. Ability to keep on appreciating every small thing God did, he got it from his father. And what God wants us to do today with Lucky is to join him to thank God and to encourage him to be continually grateful. Lucky is one of the most humble men I've seen extremely humble and is a man full of ideas he is a bundle of talent built inside a single man by god and despite that you can't pick him out among us as somebody that god has blessed if you are going to pick some people that god has blessed you probably not pick lucky except that today is his day and we are looking at him wearing his suit he's such a humble man and that is exactly what god wants god wants us to be grateful a heart of gratitude and god stressed this in the book of Luke chapter 17, verses 17 to 19, where he healed 10 lepers and only one came back. And the one that came back got total wholeness. While the other ones were healed, they, had, they still had the marks, they still had the scars. This one that came back to say thank you, got wholeness. That means there was no scar at all that he ever had leprosy. And what is God saying? Quickly, three things. God wants us to develop the ability to introspect by being grateful to him for everything. You go out, you come in, you must be grateful. If there is a man that has the art of gratitude, it is lucky again. I mean, when you sit with him, he keeps on telling you the story of how he came up. I've heard his story more than 10 times. And I'm used to hearing it because it's always fresh. And I know that he's always trying to tell God, you are behind all this. God wants to take the glory in our lives. Most of us get short-circuited because we begin to say, I am a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. No. The owner of the breath in your nostrils is God. Is God. And number two, he wants us to attribute most of our achievements, if not all, to him. All our achievements. There is a man sitting here with us today. He's one of the largest, I mean, highest employers of labor in Nigeria. He singularly employs over 10,000 people in Nigeria. He's among us. You can't pick him out. And I'm not going to, you know, mention his name. He knows himself. This man employs over 10,000. When they, they listed out the companies that actually have the highest employers in Nigeria, he, his company is one of the highest employers of labor in Nigeria. I happen to get his book, Touching Lives, The Social Story. I don't want to introduce him at all. Touching lives. I read the story. It was just like David and Solomon. His father was an evangelist who was a prayer warrior by excellence, who attributed everything to God. And his son, in that book, you can touch God in that book. Everything he did, he attributed to God. All that he's doing, he attributes to God. When he becomes naughty, totally naughty, I, have, I didn't meet him, I, I had not met him, only today I met him. But from the book, you could see the influence of God in his life. And brethren, somebody who employs over 10,000 people, you know it's not a millionaire. I hope you know that. A millionaire does not employ 10,000 people. And you will not know it at all. That is exactly what God wants us to do. Attribute all your glory to him. And then he will take you further. And finally, 
God always wants to do more for us. Whatever you have done, you achieved today, is still very small. When you show gratitude to God, he does more. When you show more gratitude, he does much more. And I pray that as we have come to join Lucky to thank God today, we go back and begin to introspect where we are today is by the grace of God. Where we will be tomorrow will be by the grace of God. And at all times, God wants gratitude from our mouths. And I pray that God will continue to take the glory in our lives and take us to a place of purpose and place of fulfillment in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, you say, why are there not ten healed? No one returned except this one who is even a stranger. You desire gratitude. And you deserve gratitude. I pray that all of us who have heard you today, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, will develop towards you a deep heart of gratitude. And that which is still naughty in our lives, you will remove them. That which is still confusing in our lives, you will take them off. And you will take us to heights higher than what we could imagine in the name of Jesus. What you said is, eyes have not seen what you will do. And I pray that as we begin to praise you in a special way, in a special way, Father, take us beyond our dreams in Jesus' name. We promise you we will not touch your glory. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brendan. Let's put those eyes together. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. A round of applause, please. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop clapping. Don't stop clapping. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things I respect about Pastor, you know, the way he manages time, you know, the way he keeps to time. Thank you very much. He said it 10 minutes, uh, you know, and nothing more than that. And in fact, as I was listening to the message, I felt like, you know, what I got was actually more than 10 minutes. Please, one more time, ladies and gentlemen, can we just put our hands together for Jesus? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. The Lord will continue to increase you in Jesus' name. Your anointing will not run dry and your garment will not get stained in Jesus' name. We all finish strong and strongly in Jesus' name. None of us will miss eternity in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I just want to try. So how many of us still can tell me the title of the message? Just one person. I feel like doing another giveaway. I know you are here because I've been looking at you and you have the, even the attribute of David. I saw the way you were dancing. I'm still going to award you. So, ma. Gratitude and always appreciating God. Okay. The heart of gratitude. Thank you very much. Uh, ma, while I was there, uh, you know, okay, you're on the I wanted to do something. You know, while I was there, I saw the way you were dancing and even when we came in, you know, no, ma, sit down. Ah, sit down, sit down. It's not time to dance yet. <laughs> You know, I saw the way you were dancing, and I just like, ah, man, what can I do for this mommy that, you know, I like your spirit. And today, you know, our pastor spoke about David, and I just saw everything about David in you, and you continue to dance in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, sit down. What am I hearing? I, 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 want to, I, I want to do, I want to give you a gift. Uh, it's heavy. Ma, sit down, sit down, don't worry. I'm the one that will give you, I will stand, don't worry, sit down. You know, it, it's heavy, but I will just do it. I keep hearing 2022. Sierra Roba. <laughs> Toyota Camry. Toyota Camry. Wait, 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 wait. I need to hear it. Black. Tinted. Um, no, yes, no. No. Police, they don't disturb people for tinted again. The IG has said it. It's, yes, it's okay. Okay. Ma. But social grace over the power conferred on me on behalf of myself and my family. Uh, we are presenting to you a Toyota Camry. Wait, don't clap yet. Man, sit down, sit down, sit down. A Toyota Camry. Okay, I think that's the guy that I want to do the registration I'm calling you. A Toyota Camry 2022 soft copy. I will send it to your phone. The Lord will give you the hard copy in Jesus' name. Me, I'll give you soft copy. I'll get your number. I'll send it to your phone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Soft copy, man. Remind me. I have the picture on my phone. I'll send it to you. The, you just trust God for hard copy. May I give you soft? Amen. Our God is a God that can do all things. He said, is there anything too difficult for me to do? To start Camry is small. Amen. But me, I have the power and data to give you soft copy. Amen. Hallelujah. Receive it in Jesus' name. <sighs> Hallelujah. Ushers, thank you. 
Amen. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. In case you're just coming, uh, my name is Melarius. They call me Black Saint JP. And you're wondering that when was the last time I was in Jerusalem? My own JP is not the Jerusalem pilgrimage. My own JP is Jesus speaking. Amen. JP is JP. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, um, at this point in time, I'll quickly like to, and if there is a book we must read, uh, I want to recommend that book is Touching Lives. Amen. Please make sure you get that book. I'll go and look for it. Uh, when Pastor was speaking about the man uh, providing jobs for over 10,000 people, some people were actually looking at me. Even me, I define job. Amen. It's not me. I'm not the one, though. <laughs> uh, you know, there was a time in my life I went for an interview. You know, I've heard it. You know, dream big, dream big, dream big. I was dreaming big. And the final stage, it was the head of sales that was interviewing me. And after the whole thing, the man had been on that seat for 15 years. And he said, no, he did 15 years before he got there. And he said, Melarius, if we employ you in the next two years, where do you see yourself? You know, vibrant. You know, I just gave my life that time. I was declaring, as you speak it, you will have it. I said, sir, if you employ me in this organization, the next two years, I want to see myself as the head of sales. The man said, do you know that is my role? I said, sir, yes, I know. He said, it took me 15 years to achieve. I said, yes, what God cannot do does not exist. I'll do it. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, don't worry. We'll get back to you. Your excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's over 10 years now. They've not gotten back to me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much, sir, for that message. The Lord will continue to enrich you in him, in Jesus' name. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I'd like to call uh, Jennifer... Michi, are you ready for to come and take the citation? Please, can we just put our hands together for Jennifer? A round of applause for her. A round of applause for her. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My name is Oyemichi Jennifer, and I'm here to take the citation of Barrister Loki Oyema Egede. Mr. Loki Oyema Egede was born on April 1st, 1962, to Mr. David Egede and Mrs. Regina Egede, both subsistent farmers in the Ewuru community of Abo, in Nigeria's then Midwestern region, now Delta State. In 1969, he attended Uwefo Primary School in Ewuru Abo and finished in 1975, and then proceeded to Elaho Grammar School in Eguaholo, Bendel State, in 1975, and graduated in 1980. From January to December 1981, he worked at the same primary school where he had attended. In January 1982, he completed his higher school certificate at Edo College in Benin City. And from November 1982 to June 1986, he attended Bendel State University. He attended the Nigerian Law School in October 1986 and was admitted to the Nigerian Bar in June 1987. From 1987 to August 1988, he served in Nigeria's National Youth Service Corps, NYSC. From December 1988 until December 2007, he worked for Obasanjo Farms Nigeria Limited, rising through the ranks from legal officer to executive director of Obasanjo Holdings Limited and managing director of Alarab Properties Limited, that's the real estate division of Obasanjo Holdings Limited. And he voluntarily retired on December 31st, 2007 to start his own businesses. He established his own company in January 2008 with just two employees, Adams Aderinoye as the accountant and Patience Jupe Ayodele as a secretary. Since then, he has ventured in law, agriculture, real estate, wholesale and retail, and his staff has expanded from two to 420. He got married in August 1991 to Mrs. Chiwe Ngozi and they are blessed with three children, Esther, Steve, and Obiadiri. 
He was the best graduating student in the commercial law class of 1986 at Bendel State University, and he was also among the top students in Nigerian Law School class of 1987. <laughs> the businesses founded by him include Plenary Solicitors, TransUniverse Un Assets Management Limited, Africom Wholesales Limited, Super Saver International Limited, and Super Saver Supermarkets. For his contribution, dedication, and excellent leadership in Nigerian society, he has received numerous honors from prestigious organizations, bodies, and religious groups, including the University of Agriculture at Belkota, Hayat, McPherson University, and Foursquare Gospel Church. Please, can we have a round of applause for Mr. Loki on here, my daddy? Thank you. Please don't be tired. Please don't be tired. Please, you can do better. You can do better. You can do better than that. We are not clapping just for him. We are clapping for the God behind his success, for the God behind his life. Please let it go. 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 Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have a seat. Can we quickly have? That be, can we quickly have bed day? Do we have? Do you have it? Uh, I just feel that this atmosphere is is good for that. Hmm? Hmm? Do, do you have the bed day? Can you just? Oh, okay. We'll get back to that. You know, it's a live show. It's not part of it, but as I hear, I speak. Amen. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow. Let me still go back to, to the profile again. All right. Super Saver. Super Saver Supermarket. Super Saver International. Parisa will be very good at saving. Thank you. I'll bring it down. Thank you. You're the saver. saver. And it's not just about saving money. You'll save souls too. You save lives. Because there are people that have given jobs. And I know as even as I'm talking to you, the Lord is speaking to you. Don't harden your heart, sir. Amen. The Lord is saying, save my boy. Save my boy. And you are arguing with us. You say, God, he saved her. You say, no. I mean, save him financially. Save him. Save him. He needs help. Amen. I need help, sir. I told you, I have two children. They are kids, but they eat like adults. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, channel. And you know, when we were growing up, sir, we were taking pap. But these children, because I told my wife before I got my... Ladies and gentlemen, I took pap to the extent that I was perplexed. Amen. I can tell you all the flavor of pap. Amen. Okay, Baba, that's vanilla. Amen. The one with corn. That's, uh, I think, the, that, that, that one, strawberry. I can, I can take you through it. You know, pap. And for a very long time in my life, my destiny was slowed down. I did not know that it was pap that was causing it. Amen. And I told my wife, I said, baby, when we get married, my children will not take pap. Hallelujah. He said, why? I said, I have taken pap on their behalf. Amen. I take pap for generations, amen. And we started so well, sir. We started so well. The firstborn came. Then it was something called after meal. We started after meal. It was good. It got to a time after me just jumped up. 5,000. I said, baby, can we still continue this ministry? He said, she said they will not take pap. I said, yes. But they can take pap tamil, amen. I had to package pap inside the case of pap tamil and I call it Paptamil, amen. You know, wisdom is profitable to direct. Hallelujah. You know, recently we moved to, a, we moved to Surulere and we went there. We were looking for schools. And one of the schools we went to, we just went there. And my, my son is very active. He'll be seven this year. And he said he wants to do karate. While we're looking for schools, we've not even checked school fees. We got to a school not too far from where we stay. And they gave us the B for karate. And my wife, I don't know, she's so addicted to what God cannot do does not exist. I said, I know. They gave us the B for karate, not even the school fees. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 a.m., I could not sleep. I was looking at the ceiling. Whereas there was no ceiling, it was decking. My wife woke up, said, what is happening? I said, baby, I'm still concerned about this karate. He said, why? They can do it. The Lord will do it. I said, I know. I said, it's about the fee that we have to pay. He said, don't worry. The Lord will provide. I said, I know. And it just dawned on me. The scripture that says... 
thou shalt hold the peace and the Lord shall fight their battle. I said, baby, you cannot be teaching these children to be violent. The Lord said, hold your peace and I'll fight their battle. They don't need to fight. The Lord will fight for them. Amen. We ended it with scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. Karate what? How much? 300,000 or 50 for karate? Ah, uh -uh. Amen. Hallelujah. You know me, I'm, I'm, I'm just an upcoming. I'm not like barista yet. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I'd like us to just progress and move with our program. Um, okay, maybe I should just ask this. If we're really following, I don't want you to open your, the broker now. Like, I just think, where Barista, his first school, the name of his first school, that's be like the primary school. Anybody? Anybody? Ah, so we're not following. Ah, uh -uh, mommy. <laughs> mommy, if you don't know it, <laughs> we need to check your marriage certificate to be sure that you are called to this ministry. <laughs> Anybody? Mommy, I want to collect all my gifts. There is, there is no soft copy now. I can't wish that out. There is no soft copy again. <laughs> well, yeah, tell me more. Uwaifu. Uwaifu Primary School. Is mommy correct? Is she correct? Uh-uh. Okay. Oh, okay, I'm coming. Is she correct? Okay. That you know. Uh -uh. I, did you mean her before? Uh, have you met her before? Are you living in the same company? If she has offended, you forgive her. <laughs> please, please, what's the name of school? Wherefore? Wife. So, so, okay. The pronunciation. The wife. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, ah. Come here. You don't want. Okay. And I wanted to do a giveaway for you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, just like to uh, progress with our program. At this point in time, uh, I like to, you know, because today we are going to do a lot of uh, speeches, you know, public speaking and all that. And that's why we are here, by special grace of God, we are going to be impacted spiritually and intellectually. So please, let us listen. And when we need to take notes, we let us take notes. And I trust God that we will not go back empty in Jesus' name. Uh, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, someone that I respect so much. He is a barista, and he will be um, talking about family and nation building. Of course, that's like the first series. Ladies and gentlemen, please, if your hands are not so heavy, please. Uh, okay, let me, before, before I get to that, so that you just know a few things about, about the speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now I'm talking about Barista God's Will, Iyoke, Iyoha, Esquire, is a public interest development legislative advocacy, principal counsel, Iyoha, Iyoke, and co. Barista God's Will, Iyoke Iyoha Ilega practitioner was called to the Nigeria Bar in 1987. That time I still, I still the road tire for street. Experienced in various aspects of legal practice and inspired by passion and firm belief in the law as tool for systematic engineering for sustainable development. He has special interest in public interest litigation, development law and legislative advocacy. He is a public affairs analyst and was a member of the 2014 National Conference. Hmm. So after this, I will ask you what happened to that. We've not, I think we're just, because we had a lot of great people on that team and up till today, we set up a committee to look at it. He had a stint in banking where he acquired practical knowledge of the indispensability of real banking and financial services as catalyst for development. He is a firm believer and an advocate of the Christian world view as the panacea and guarantee of personal success and social justice. He is on the national board of the African Kingdom Business Forum, a continental business forum of kingdom-minded believers of the Christian faith. And he is married with lovely children. Ladies and gentlemen, please a round of applause for Barrister Godswin Yoke Yoha. Thank you very much, sir. Please don't stop clapping. Don't stop clapping. Let's celebrate this, this great man that we have in our midst today. 
Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's be all standing, upstanding. And I'm sure that in conventional programs as such, we have had introduced to us chairman of occasion, but I don't know whether what was deliberately left out, but I know every organization, every company has a head. And considering the environment where we are, the place where we are, is a house, a house of the Lord. And concerning the things we are going to talk about today, proclamation of the truth, we know that he is the truth. And we are all upstanding in recognition of the chairman of this occasion, invisible though physically, but real, in reality in our hearts, the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And much other aspect of it, we are gathered for one thing. We are going to consider a very important subject for which we were born. And the environment in which we are in is where lives are molded. Where individuals are born, born, born to become nations. In scriptural context, we call ourselves the body of Christ, spiritual Israel. But we do know, as a matter of truth, that Israel was a metamorphosis, a transformation of an individual who became a, who became a nation. We are talking about our people who see themselves with the eyes of a nation. And we are gathered here because of the subject of the cost of nation building. And I will believe that God is out to transform us, not just from individuals who think, look into ourselves or look outwards to see how the nation could be born through us. So I want us, in acknowledgement of that, to recite the national anthem. Arise, O compatriots. Nigeria's call to serve our fatherland with love and strength and faith. I'm here to present today, I'm not going to present a paper, but I'm going to stir up a discussion because they said all that Jesus Christ began to do and teach. He said, if they were to be written, he said the whole world would not contain them. So what we try to do is to stir up a discussion, and I have just 30 minutes to do that, but I'm sure that I'll be able to do that in 30 minutes. Um, I send the message across. I'm sure we're going to receive soft copies of there of the same message or the same paper, and we engage on them from time to time. And what I've said here, what I put here, is the reason, philosophy behind what had been said before. If you go through the program you have, you find out that the celebrant of today's occasion already presented a paper, The Law and Society. I see myself more as a philosopher, but a person who talks and sees things from the Christian or kingdom worldview. The philosopher looks at the reason before the act. The person you have here today, the purpose for which I gathered here today, we are celebrating an activist, not a philosopher. A person who does it, we can come in and explain the acts, but he shows the way.
Today, we are considering the subject of the family and nation building. And of course, I've drawn your attention to the fact that the, what the family is, what it represents, and that's something, that's a, um, that's a, a subject or a matter which we all relate to. We all come from families. We belong to families. We are aspiring to build families. And of course, we do know that the family is a reality, is a unit, the smallest unit, social unit of every society. And the family is the first government after self-government. You know there are government at different levels. Every individual has a government. You are a government unto yourself. You have a will within you. It's your ability to be able to manage your will, subjecting your will in a certain manner, discipline yourself that determines how successful you are. And the family is the first government outside of self that helps you to discipline your passion, your tendency to subject them to certain values. So the family is a place or institution where values are built. Humans are constructed to fit into society in a manner that the family will be proud of. And of course, we talked about what a nation is. And speaking to the paper, I'm not going to read it out. Because if we're going to read it out, we'll spend more than 30 minutes to do that. And I'll do that in 20 minutes so that if there are questions, there are issues you raise as I stir up your mind, there are questions you need to, to ask, we'll be able to give you opportunity to do that. And contributions you make beyond what has been said, you could do that. The nation is a group of groups of people that are bound or united by a common factor which could be culture, language, ancestry, or justice system. We can talk in this context of Yoruba nation. If you talk about Yoruba nation, you talk about people who are tied down by common things, not necessarily language, because they have different linguistic units. You find that people are bound together by certain cultural traits. Is there a sense of hard work adventure, or a sense of celebration, achievement, people who aspire to achieve, and celebrate achievement. Who acknowledge the fact that you don't just acknowledge a person because he exists. You acknowledge a person because there's something tied down to his life. True or false? That is your urban nation. Then, of course, we talked about the family, the state, and the nation. Because there's often the confusion between the state and the nation. There's a distinction between a state and a nation. A state could be a country. It has a territory. It has recognized sovereign or laws. It has coercive powers to enforce certain things on certain conduct. Communities, a nation, a Nigeria is a country. That's why it's assured because we have a defined word, territory. To an extent, we have people we can number and enumerate and say these are the number of people, even if we are not too sure. Say we have 200 million people in Nigeria that belong to the state called Nigeria. But a nation, it's a people bound together by something. In our own context, it's a nation we desire to build based on what? Common law, common system. So we need to understand the context of a nation are, are people who have something in common, who aspire to something. And I believe, and that is where we are going to lay so much emphasis on today and how to achieve such a nation. And we often hear the, the, con, the concept of nation building. It follows that when you talk about nation building, it's a process, something that is continuing. You don't find a nation that says the nation is built. It's a continuous process, an aspiration, an ideal. It's a pursuit towards a particular end. And that is where we're going to spend some time to lay emphasis on how to achieve a nation, how to build a nation. And we seek to establish the fact that the nation, quite contrary to common assumption or presumption, a nation is not built by leaders. A nation is not built by the government. A nation is built by what? The people. And a sort of people that build a nation is a function of the family 
system. People you could call citizens, they build what? A nation. And citizens are products of families who come into the system and by virtue of the contributions they make, a nation is built. So nation building or progressive development is the systemic establishment or the commitment to the fundamental ideas or goals to which individuals voluntarily commit themselves by the deployment of their time, talent, and other valuables. Nation building is a simultaneous process that entails the following. Now, this is a vicious circle of development, what I consider as the wheels that drive the nation building process. Ideas, creativity, and innovation. People who think, you can't think except you have in mind thy reasons. You can't think except you have something to think about. People who are members of society, they see things. They seek to bring about changes by virtue of what they see and the need they see. And of course, a mind, a functional mind does not end in generating ideas, creating ideas, being innovative. It's takes on the further step of putting those ideas to work, the process of productivity. And we seek to establish that all of these acts, whether of creativity, innovation, or ideas, they work simultaneously with the productive system, productive mind, with a desire to meet the needs of people within a particular society or community. So there are four Four phases of four realm of vicious circle of development. Creativity, ideas, creativity, innovation, productivity, distribution, of course, consumption, and that's where we all belong. We consuming one thing or the other. Everyone has needs. Whether it's a child that is born today, whether it's an adult as an aged unproductive, he has what needs. Is the ability for a particular society, a community, or nation to meet the needs, which is what nations work consistently and continuously to achieve to ensure that the needs of members of a particular country, community, are met. That is what is known as nation building process. Nation building, nation is not built with infrastructure. The fact that you have roads, yes, they are necessary. The fact that you have theaters, good concourse as such as a place as we are, beautiful, impressive structures do not necessarily imply what? Development. Development starts with, development starts with the people who think, who think productively, who think with a desire to impact and bring about changes. There are people who desire to add value to what they see. He said, like the family, nation building is the existence of systems that ensures the presence of the above activities and their, sust and their sustenance. Nation building is the commitment of the state towards all these processes. It is therefore an eternal and continuous process. The whole purpose of the state, which oftentimes, of course, which includes and encompasses the government, is the ability to set rules and capacity to enforce those rules to ensure that these processes are maintained so that they could be sustained. That is the whole work of the state. That is the whole work of the government. Nation building entails policies, plans, and programs that sustain the above activity for individual empowerment, community sustenance, national prosperity, and self-reliance. Nation building is a process that ensures that the sustenance of those activities, the extent of which is the extent of which citizens fit into or are made to engage in one or several of the above activities. Now, nation building process, the integrity of the process 
is a function of how citizens seek to fit or are made to fit into one or several of these productive uh, activities, all these activities. Either you are creating ide generating ideas, being innovative, bringing ideas to ensure production of goods and service to meet the needs of people. It is to that extent you are involved in nation building process. And a state that functions is a state that seeks to ensure that at every point in time, the policies, the plans of government are meant to achieve this objective. And of course, we do know that when we talk about nation building, there's no way you can talk, think out with the idea of leadership. And what is the role of leadership here? And of course, we did say, and we have established that fact, that the family is the unit, is the production. That is the place, the pro factory, where you produce the people that fit in into nation building process. Nation is not a physical, it's not just made up of a state with a physical territory, it's made up of a people. That is where you can see some persons who belong to nations that are functioning, that are seen as successful, they are ready to carry the flag anywhere. I belong to that word, nation. We talked about the integrity of nation building process, a function of patriotic citizenship which is dependent on the extent of the commitment of leadership to the above development ideals. The family, nation building, and leadership. The family is the base unit of society as we have established. This is where the culture of relationship is learned or cultivated. You know, social relationship is learned from the family. The matter of identity is in the family you know who you are. In the family you are given a name. Beyond the name, it's a family you relate to. You know who the father is, who the head of the family is, who the mother is. You now know how to identify people. You know how to say, this is uncle, this is auntie. And this is a process we all pass through. Just as in the family system, natural family system, nation also is established on, that, on those principles. Is the extent, the level of commitment of the leadership of a family to the members of that family that oftentimes determines the dysfunction or the functioning of that family. The success otherwise of that family is usually a function of family unity. That's a place of leadership. In a system where you have power tussle, strife between spouses, there's usually a problem. We're in the house of the Lord. And we do know the Bible says, where there's envy and strife, there are man of what? Evil works. And where there's contention for power, which is already a temptation, where you have two or three persons gathered. There's always contention, tussle for power. What well, we know. But, but when there's unity of purpose, when the objective is clear, that all you're trying to do is to make each and everyone fit into an aspect which is the uh, which is responsibility of leadership. You know what a child can do. A child grows up in a home. The child can work on its own. The child, when the child is a toddler, there are certain things you don't ask the child to do. By the time the child begins to learn language, know how to relate, know how to identify objects, you can tell the child, please, give me that cup there. He undertakes that task without asking the questions, sometimes joyfully. And we are saying in a nation building process is that self motivation to act, to do things without necessarily being prompted to do so. We talked about, we're talking about a, a person today we are celebrating. We're all classmates. But when it comes to industrial capacity, I can't say we are classmates anymore. Hello? When it comes to industrial capacity, we are not classmates what anymore. We used to be classmates. He's operating at a different level now. Why? He had opportunity. You read his, you read his uh, little of his biography. He is a person that if it were some of us, 
by virtue of the opportunity that we had, we have, would have moved in a different direction. I recall, yes, when he was in, when they were in power, I could see people making calls. All they were making those calls for, please, I want you to take me to a guy at the top. Hello? I want to take me to a guy, just introduce me, nothing more. And I knew people who made so much fortune just by mere what? Introduction, true or false. That's how these people tell us how the system works. Some of us come under such tremendous pressure. The day somebody knows you are somewhere, the next thing tells you, please take me there. Please, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pay your flight. I'm going to pay this. I know it's time cost money. I'm going to give you this to take me there. See, that's how the system works. I recall someone called me some time ago, some years back. He got to know that I have linked with somebody somewhere. He told me, where are you? I said, I'm so sorry. I said, what are you doing there? I said, I'm, why is he doing Kaduna? I said, no, 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 no. Things don't work that way. You ought to be here at this point in time. I learned so and so person is there. You should not be here. This is where you should be. It's a system that works on opportunism. Not opportunity to lift up people. Not opportunity to fit into any of these productive economic development system or places, but opportunity what? For self-what? Gratification. Today, we can talk about a person who has over 10,000 persons in his employment. Not because he occupied a political office. Not because he's a minister, a commissioner, or a local government chairman. Today, we can talk about a man who in just eight years ago had just two employees. Today, has over 400. And when you talk with him, his aspiration is how many, of, how many more people can we pull out of the unemployment market? And if we all think that way, that is what it takes to build what a nation. And what we seek to establish is that a nation is not built on politics. And we need to understand the concept of even democracy. Democracy is not seasonal or periodic election, exercise of electoral franchise. No. Democracy is participation. The level of participation of your citizens in the process of what development, to what extent are they involved? What are the facilities and infrastructure, social infrastructure, to ensure engagement or participation in the development or nation building process? That is what democracy is all about. That's why today people are looking back. I mean, you know, ask questions whether the democracy we have learned, whether that's the way to go. In the context of the emerging philosophical uh, concept of, of uh, uh, democracy, People are beginning to look at China and say China could be what? A democratic what? Nation. Because they look back, they are looking at how the extent to which they have pulled their people out of what? Poverty. That is what democracy is all about. Participation. And we seek to establish from the, the perspective of a lawyer that I am, a development lawyer that I am, Look at it constitutionally and see the principle upon which our development or democracy ought to be established. It says in section 14 of the Constitution that the Nigerian state shall be established on the is established on the principles of democracy and what social justice. We are trying to do all of that. We are trying to establish that here. I'm sure you are going to get it out there. Read there. You get my contact. You can ask questions, raise questions. We can give you further, uh, I mean, explanation as to the basis of some of the propositions that we made here. He said, but we can't look at some of these issues without drawing attention to where all, of the, all, all these ideas are coming from. And we did say that just as divine order, where God proposes that man exercises his will by personal election. The unwritten code of every family is that the products can independently make wise choices. The same code applies to states or political entities, where the measure of nationhood is the extent to which the citizens willingly offer and apply themselves in any of uh, apply themselves in any or several of the nation-building activities. 
This is how they feel loved by the state, being motivated, thereby motivated to contribute to economic well-being and overall development of the organization, community, or state to which they belong. This is propelled by relationship. We seek to establish here that a nation is built on economy or economics. And I realize that economy or economics is the basic thing that stimulants that determines the decisions that we make. I left home to serve in Kaduna. I set up a practice in Kaduna. I still have an office in Kaduna. At some point in time, I had to move the base of my practice to Abuja. Why? Because certain things had changed. The children were growing up. There was need to inter in relate more to the communities. Abuja was more central. They can fly several parts of the country and come home. I could pay the rent or own a house and stay there. Then the schools for the children to attend are close by. These are all economic what inspired decisions. There are not things you just do just because I like that place. My friend lives there. If the place can't sustain you, you can't stay there. A nation is built on economics. A nation is not built on politics. A nation is built by economic-minded people. It's not built by politically or power-minded people. So that is why we do need to know that the matter of development is our individual what? responsibilities. And the orientation for that level of responsibility have to come from our homes and our families. I say this because when I was thinking about this topic, at some point in time I had changed so much, when I saw what he wrote, it gave me a different idea. When you sit down with Lucky, or you meet any of his siblings, you interact with them, it gives you an idea where they are coming from. A family, a common culture, a common stuff. It runs through. It tells you there's something about the family background that matters to life. You don't see a family where siblings are in strife. You see a family where each one is on its course, imparting communities, imparting lives. Family. So it's very important that we know that relationship factor in family and nation. Uh, uh, in, in family and nation building. Of course, I'm sure you get to do that. Family values and nation building. We have already mentioned that. Of course, we have said that through democracy, the extent to which citizens are part of the state and their interests accommodated in the plans and programs of government and their lives are thus positively impacted. Social justice, it's all about unhindered access to economic, political, and social opportunities. Democracy is the process by which this is achieved or attained within any given state or polity. We say this because when people talk about democracy, democracy, they are talking about next election, election, election circle. No. And oftentimes in doing this, they are not properly oriented because of this orientation in understanding, we are not engaging the issues. We are thinking more about who is running? Where is he coming from? Not the ideas that he has that will, would prosper you, that will ensure that the business, little investment you make in works, that ensure that the kind of education or values you need your children to have are imparted. We don't think about that. Often we think about does, how much capacity does he have to scramble and secure power. Not the ideas he has, the creative ideas he's going to bring into place to ensure that where we are and what we are doing, we do it better. It says, it is inordinate dependence on government in view of the common misconception about politics or democracy that has caused the level of economic retardation, stagnation in development, and social disorientation. As for waiting hope at every election circle for messianic intervention, the socioeconomic landscape is abandoned to diverse deviant activities that leave the landscape 
desolate. Consequently, the people get frustrated and despondent while the circle of misery continues. With this level, what challenge does it pose to all of us, each and every one of us? A time to retreat. Not to retreat to our families to make more children. A time to retreat, to think, to introspect, and see how to engage positively. It is a time to begin to think, look around us, look at persons you can look up to. It's a time to look at models that God has set around us. And I think that's one of the things that today's events offers us opportunity to do. We're standing and looking at a man who, from the obscurity of a lowly life, has come to a point that will leave a various schedule to come and see. But may we see properly. We are not celebrating somebody who has made a name. We are celebrating, we are acknowledging somebody through whom God has used as a platform to express himself. I do not wish to, I wish to say something. When I was putting this together, I was like trying to read through the celebrant to put something. Because as I said, as a, a Bible scholar, I believe that when God shows us things, he wants us to see things where he sees them. Say we are reading epistles. What is there in the life of this person you need to put down for people to learn? So what you have here, whatever language is expressed, is inspired by my close study of the celebrant of today. It's a practical example of what it takes to build a nation and the materials required to build a nation. If I've said so much, is it much that I have the time to do? to stir up your mind. It's a conversation I've started. We shall continue to do that. Thank you so much for indulging me. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Let's put those hands together. Thank you. Thank you. Can we just do court? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Somebody was saying, uh, uh, are you sure he's not more than 30 minutes? Go and stop him. I said, ha, he's a bad style. <laughs> and so I said, don't worry. You know, at his own 30 minutes is different from my own 30 minutes. I said, I said, know the constitution. Me, I don't know it. Amen. The only constitution I know is the word of God. Amen. Well done, sir. We celebrate you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, please. Can we just put our hands together? Thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, I was following, and, you know, you said something about, you know, of course, self-motivation happens to with family. You know, you build and all that. You know, we are supposed to be motivated. Uh, but, unfortunately, uh, many of us, especially young people like us, our motivation now is like we are being motivated to seek greener pasture. Uh, you know, motivation differs. I, you know, I was reading through and I just saw that, you know, sir, with due respect, many of you on this table, you have enjoyed this country, but people of course are coming behind you, sir. God is helping us. So, sir, if I'm motivated to go to Canada, don't blame me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just about my own motivation. Hallelujah. So we can also own your own motivation. And I always, you, you said something again about, you know, father being the head of the family. And I just remember something. I went to one of the best universities in Nigeria. I went to the University of Illinois, and I'm so proud of my school. Uh, better by far. Uh, I, you know, in those days, uh, you know, I lived off campus at Boba in Illinois. And my landlord and my landlady were saying, the, every night, the husband would be saying, I'm the head of this family. They'll be there, but I'm the head of this family. The wife would be saying, I'm the neck also. I know how many hours I knelt down, how many times I knelt down before you could be there. I'm the head, I'm the head, I'm the neck, I'm the head. All of a sudden, there was this fateful day, 2 a.m. I will never forget. He just said they were banging the door. And I was just, all of us, you know, quiet. And we're just listening. I'm the head, I'm the head. Those guys just spoke. Mommy. You know, before, you know, when you hear those kind of knock, you know 
Even when the Bible says he will come like a thief in the night, but you know Jesus cannot come like that. So you know who they are. Amen? Immediately before we know what, so we're looking for the head. The head entered the bed. Amen? He said, Mom, he said, Daddy, Daddy. He said, oh, no, go open the door. They didn't open the door. Those guys forced themselves in. They got in. And they said, this morning, we don't even get any problem with anybody. We want to have a conversation with the head of this family. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right from down at the bed, my landlord looked up. Mommy, it is who they are looking for. <laughs> That's another motivation. Maybe not be that kind of man in Jesus' name. Because as a man, you are supposed to defend, you are supposed to provide, you know, fend, you know, just like uh, Adam and Eve, you know, the garden, you are supposed to make sure that everything is well. But, uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, at this point in time, uh, you know, you said something that it's time for us to go back to our families, not to go and make babies. Children, you said it. And I was writing notes. They don't even tell anybody that one now. <laughs> when I see people doing naming ceremony, I say, ah, you are very strong, oh, amen. Recently, my cousin, had, they were, they've had four boys. They were not looking for, for a girl. Ah, all of a sudden, I just saw the wife again. I said, ah, bros. And he went for naming. Ah, he did not know. I was prostrated and said, why are you prostrated? I said, ah, I respect you, sir. Five. <laughs> You are trying. He said, oh, God will take care of him. You know, nowadays we are used to, you know, you go for a Yoruba setting and they will say, Allah has Sakbara Dotun. You know, anytime I go to minister somewhere and they say, Allah has Sakbara Dotun, I said, Dotun has started paying school fees. I better give me something. Amen. Egg back. Be Allah has Sakbara Dotun. Dotun is some school You know, <laughs> so that's why you see some of us now, uh, you know, just two. Very, very okay. My wife keeps tempting me. I told her. If the symptoms persist, I'll be sleeping in the next street. Amen. Two is okay. Hallelujah. It's not that I'm afraid. He said God will take care of me. I said, I know. I don't want to tempt God. Amen. I have a boy. I have a girl. What else are you looking for? Hallelujah. So that even when I'm motivated to go to Canada, we travel light. Amen. The one wahala. It's motivation. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know why. And let's celebrate this church. Let's celebrate this church. You know, the cozy environment. And, I, you know, when I just got in, I said, wow. You know, the AC, everything was just blowing me. Thank God I'm not blown away. I just said, wow. When you are in this kind of environment, even when tomorrow you find yourself in Canada, you will adjust, amen? Because you, there's still a little bit of cold here. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's good. We are building. I know many of you will be saying we are preparing you for heaven. No. We are praying for heaven, but it's not just, amen? You first go there first. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I'd like to... Welcome our next speaker. i uh, just quickly like to um, say one or two things about him. He's a widely acknowledged pathfinder in the microfinance and social entrepreneurship space. You know, when you're talking about banking, you know, when you see them, people like him, you know that, yes, and it will interest you to know that, yes, I actually started my career in the bank. Uh, when I was at, the, at that bank, I was able to know that there's a difference between a banker and a bank worker. Amen. I was not a banker. I was a bank worker. Amen. I was walking the street looking for deposits. And when you see my shoes, then you understand the scripture that says, I've lit my eyes to the hill. Where cometh my help? Amen. Hallelujah. He founded Life Above Poverty Organization popularly known as LAPO, and a number of institutions to address the challenges of the lack of access to finance, poor health, and social exclusion. He is a recipient of the FAT, that's FAT Foundation's Moldell Entrepreneur Award 2008, Outstanding Social Entrepreneur Africa of the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship 2010, and DSC Honoris Corsa of the University of Benin, Benin City. He holds a, doc a doctorate degree in policy and development studies. He has authored several books and articles on microfinance, enterprise development, and not profit he currently leads the LAPO group. Ladies and gentlemen, if your hands are not so heavy, can we just put our hands together for Dr. Ehiago Musso? A round of applause 
Thank you very much. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I don't know why I'm hearing 10,000, 10,000. Thank you very much, sir. I'm hearing it. <laughs> All right. Okay. As he was hearing 10,000, I was hearing 5,000. <laughs> Thank you so much because I have a very short time, so I will quickly want to go through. First of all, I want to say that the main speaker has actually addressed uh, the key issues in nation building and, of course, linking it with family. Uh, what, therefore, is left for me is to make some comments, uh, which may also look like a little biography, a little... Um, families, especially family values, because it is the family value that amplify national development or nation building. Of course, I will make some recommendations. Uh, I'm a child, or I'm a baby of the 50s, late 50, a child of 60s, a youth of the 70s, and adult of 1980s. Um, I was one of those at the beginning of the 70s, I was one of those youths that were extremely hopeful that Nigeria would be great. Um, we were told that it was very frequently said then that Nigeria is the giant of Africa. I'm not hearing that often now. And of course, we also believe that Nigeria was set to take on the whole world. And the hope we had was not without foundation. Um, in the 70s, we entered that 70, coming out of a civil war very strong. Uh, we had the policy of integration, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. Of course, a few years later, we entered the oil boom that provided so much resources for this nation. And midway, in 1975, we had a very charismatic and purposeful leadership. Uh, you could see ladies and gentlemen who I, at that time uh, were in university and were very hopeful that this nation was going to be great. But in the 80s, I fell into difficult times, just as Nigeria fell into it. Um, those of you who remember that the economic crisis we have over the years, actually started in the late, early 80s, specifically in 1982, when there was a glut in the international oil market and that diminishes, diminished the re, it, um, revenue. And of course, affect the capacity of the government to meet the needs of the people. And therefore, people see ascribed the changes in government in late 1983 and 1985 to that crisis. But what was significant was that in 1986, the government decided to adopt the structural adjustment programs. Those who are of my age may know what that program was. Uh, basically, the beginning of the devaluation of Naira, the, the beginning of reduction, removal of subsidy, and of course, the beginning of unemployment. And I fell into that. But the reality is that I came out of that as a personal response. <coughs> Working as a rural cooperative officer at the University, um, I decided to take a non-governmental approach. Took 300 naira, 100 naira each to three women in my church. In Obwashuku, it used to be a part of Bendeb. And they would use it to buy raw cassava, process to Aku, and sell on market day after day. And in the evening of our four day, I will go and collect 10 naira as repayment. Um, that was what actually over the years has become what people call about LAPO today. The biggest microfinance in Nigeria is Sierra Leone. <laughs> of course, the biggest hospital is South South. And uh, someone said earlier, um, today, take away our security guards, take away our cleaners, Take away our drivers, full time staff, 10,245. But that is, that is just split sit down. 
So I think that is just a preamble. I think that I want to quickly go through is this. It's about my generation. Um, my generation obviously may not have benefited from the breathtaking technological advancement you have today. Um, for instance, we were content with radio and black and white TV. Oh, well, okay. Of course, um, bicycle, owning bicycle and motorcycle was the greatest aspiration of most of us. Of course, we had to go to the bank and wait for hours with our tally in hands to make withdrawals. The young one today can make withdrawals online. Of course, um, when, you wrote, when you wrote a letter then, you have to wait for many days to get replies. And we live our lives without a handset. My children are still wondering, how were we able to live without handset? But we did and we survived. Of course, we studied without Google search. Now, that's most people do. But in all this, in all this, in spite of this deprivation, we don't have regrets because we had a huge compensation. And that compensation was in strong and abundant family values, which obviously may not be available now. We are taught to be diligent at the family level. We are taught to be diligent. Often our parents will not only preach that we should be diligent, they were diligent. Beginning from the farming season, uh, farming season to harvest, they work extremely hard to provide for our families. Of course, we also were asked to follow integrity. That was another value. Those values are important for nation building. They were asking us to be that in our conduct, in anything we do, we should abide with the fact that honesty is the best policy. Of course, every act of dishonesty we are sanctioned, heavily punished, and every act of integrity was equally rewarded. We were also told all the time that good name is better than gold. Of course, we were reminded that in all circumstances we find ourselves, we should remember the son or the daughter of whom you are. Of course, we were also asked to be prudent. We, act of prudence was commended. Of course, a demonstration of extravagance was always questioned. You have to explain the source of what you have. And we were also asked to persevere, to perseverance. Um, they said we have to wait for God's time, which is the best time. They told us that we have to be patient, but if we patient and mispatient fail us, we should reach to the senior sister endurance, we should endure. And so these were some of the values that they taught us. But let me say this clearly, those values family values that enables nation building were not given to us in vacuum. There were two things that were quite important that helped them to give us those values. Number one is the old time strong religious practices and values. Um, we were always directed to Proverbs 22, 27. We say, it started with a question, see thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before king. He shall not stand before me, man. Of course, in my college, a Baptist college, we had to recite this every morning. Of, these are the things. And we were exhorted. We were exhortation and glorification of miracle money and wet without, without sweat was not on the pupils. You ne we never had those things. Rather, we were told to be diligent. Often we were, we had, often, every time, almost every time, that what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and suffers the loss of his soul? Those were some of the things we were hearing from the altar. You know, the preacher were not just good at preaching, they were also good at practicing what they preach. Father, for instance, was a preacher in our community. And 
Um, as a, a primary school PPU, I will take time to take a record of collections, you know, collections on Sunday. And one day, an elder of the church came to him and said, please, I want to borrow out of the collections. But before the end of the month, when my father will take it to our district headquarters, I will repay. You re what, do you hear what my father told him? My father told him, no man can borrow God's uh, money. Not to talk of embezzling God's money. You can't borrow God's money. Those were some of the values that very early that we got. Of course, the second factor was the fact that the enabling environment provided by the government. Government at every level, even district, there were district, division, state, were able to meet the responsibility of providing the core social services of education and health. For us, education was virtually free. Okay? And so, our parents were not put under pressure. All what we need to do for our health is to go to the closest dispensary and health center, and we had quality uh, services. But now, the point is that our parents were not under pressure um, that we have today in terms of poverty. I will come to that. On the other hand, if you look at it today, the greatest threat to family values and to national, national development is the increasing level of poverty in the land. And so, the average Nigerian parents today are so disempowered, parents are so disempowered to be able, uh, to, to the extent that they have lost moral authorities over their children. If your daughter asks you, I want 50,000 naira to meet my study related expenses, and the parents are unable to provide that money, they have at the same time lost the moral authority to ask that daughter, where eventually did you get that money? This is where you see that our uh, crumbling. Way out. Uh, people will talk about preaching, about let's go back to the values, fantastic, all the preaching will do. But for me, I think the most practical and effective way to address or strengthen our family value is to tackle the endemic poverty in the land. We can blame the Western influence for whatever we are, but I agree, but the worst and prominent cause is the increased level of poverty. Parents, as I've said, have been so disadvantaged, uh, have been disempowered. What do we do? We need a comprehensive um, framework that will provide education and health services at affordable level. Ordinary family today are spending so much money to send their children to private school. The reason is that the quality of government school is done. And therefore, that has impact of increasing their level of poverty. And of course, I want to, the second thing I want to praise is the religious organization. Religion today, especially Christianity for us in the South, has become a critical element in our lives. It's pervasive everywhere. In terms of rich, it is only the Christian organization, churches today, that have that structure to go far to the remotest community in our land today. In my village, there are many churches there. And therefore, an institution that has so much impact on the people can also be a, an institution to strengthen the family values through preachment, Simon, fantastic, also economic empowerment of our people. I, I want to recommend to churches, they should embrace the concept of holistic development. Holistic development is simple. It means that in addition to the nourishment, spiritual nourishment, Simon and Sunday school, we should also pay attention meeting the needs, the physical needs of our people. This has its own root in the scripture. When Jesus has preached to the people, they were satisfied, and then against even the cancer and the advice of his disciples, he decided to feed them. So therefore, my recommendation for a physical expression of empowerment by the church 
is that every church should set up a human development department, a department that is as important as a virginity department, a department that should be resourced, to be provided with resources to plan, execute programs, activities that can affect and support the ordinary people. By way of conclusion, we need to strengthen the family values, we need it. It is not that we need it, it's actually urgently needed. Because the corruption, which damages any nation more than any pandemic or any war, is ravaging the land. And of course, diligence, hard work, prudence, personal disciplines that are supposed to be the Christian ethics, they have been replaced by the preachment of miracle money and, and wet without, um, uh, wet without uh, sweat. And of course, some have even taken it to what they call ritual money. Uh, posting schemes, this uh, scheme they have today, everyone is making people into agony they lost. As one that has made people to lose his con down, another one comes up and people go there. And so if you look at every major house in our major street today, they have baiting company of whatever name, baiting. These are some of the things we need to urgently uh, deal with. We must restore the moral authority of parents over their children. And the way to restore the moral authority of children, uh, of parents over their children is to empower those children. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Please don't stop clapping, please. Let's just pull those hands together. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very, very much, sir. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Great grace, sir. 10,245. Thank you, sir. I read business administration, sir. And I had the privilege of serving with CBN in the Loring, Kwara State. And I also served with Nigerian Christian Corpus Fellowship. Uh, I started my career in the bank. Uh, from there. Yes, I was a bank worker, but I know with you I'll be a banker. So thank you very much, sir. Before you go, I have my CV here. I'll send it to you. Or maybe, sir, so you said 300 naira. Three women, 100, 100 naira. So what year was that, sir? 1988. 1988. 300 naira. Huge capital. 100, 100 naira. Huge capital. Let's, let's put our hands together for, you know, he saw it. Now, can I have three women raise up your hands? Three women. I want to empower you. Three. Don't joke with me. I'm not joking. Three. Three. One. Two. Third one. I'll give you 100, 100 nera. And you'll be giving 10, 10 nera return. Ma? So he cannot do anything. 100. Ma? One, two, three, ninety-nine, hundred naira. Cannot do anything now. Wow. With God, my, my, my. Even you, in your heart of heart, we die your God. When you're just saying it, it's now coming from inside. You know, oh God. You know when I just, you know when I just look back. Of course, even now, jokes apart. Of course, yeah. I, you know, my wife will say, no, guy. I think she believes more in Nigeria than I, I believe in Nigeria, I'm a man of faith and all that. So anytime I want to go, she will say, no, let's still stay. And, you know, she keeps taking the thing off my mind. Because you just look at it, 100 Naira, 1988, 100 Naira, powerful. But now, 100 Naira, if you are not even careful, you give some children 100 Naira, they will not even say thank you. They won't say that. You know what happened to us as a people? What happened to leadership? What happened to the followership? You know, it's uh, really, you know, initially you think because of the kind of job I do, you want to go, maybe you're planning, yeah, you want to travel, somebody will just say, ah, Black Saint, you are going to anchor my wedding in December. 
you know, you are booked for the whole, for the rest of the year. You just stay. And really, I believe so much in this country. And I believe God that, you know, with us, Nigeria will be great again in Jesus' name. You know, it's not just about praying. It's about doing what we need to do. And just like we've been hearing, it starts from the home. It starts from the home. Our children, you know, nowadays, the way children, the way they learn now is different. Children are wonderful. I remember growing up in those days, there are some things you can't even sit down and watch with your dad in the sitting room. You can't even see. When your father is watching TV, there are some scenes they want to be showing. You will, close, you will just go to the room. You, your daddy cannot be watching ball and you will say, Daddy, I want to watch cartoon. You know, but <laughs> I know children are nowadays. They are enjoying grace. But really, the other time I was watching ball. I know one of the speakers spoke about, I think, was it, was it doctor, was talking about endurance. And one of the things that, that have made me to learn endurance, I know it's part of the fruit of the spirit, he's been a national supporter, long suffering. And that day I was watching ball, and they were dealing with us anyhow. And I was doing somehow. And my son just came to me and said, Daddy, be a man, be a man, be a man. I said, hey. <laughs> In those days, you can't tell your daddy to be a man. Ah, you need to go and get another accommodation. You know, but now, yeah, you won't believe like since my, my, my younger sister got, got married, we went for her wedding. And since that time, my daughter, four years old, every time she was leading devotion in the evening, she would say, Father, let my wedding come. Let my wedding come. I say, yeah. <laughs> you know, children are the way they pick. And that's why as parents, as fathers, as mothers, we need to do the right things, you know, in their presence. Not that you are at home. And your landlord, you are owing him. It's not just be ashamed of. Even me, I'm owing my landlord. Your landlord, you are owing your landlord, and your landlord is at the door. And you are telling your son, go and tell him I'm not at home. You know? You go and tell him that we are not at home. Are you at home? You are teaching him how to lie. And so tomorrow, those are the kind of people that when they face panel, they will say, let's off the mic. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, we are not off in the mic. We are progressing. And quickly, at uh, this point in time, of course, our next speaker is someone that we all know uh, will be watching. Is someone to just pay attention to the screen. Um, He's a former president of Nigeria with over 30 books in print covering a variety of topics. He pursues a passion for conflict resolution. And I'm so sure maybe that's one of the reasons why he's not here. I'm not even sure he's in the country, you know, always resolving conflicts. Mediation and development through a number of institutions, including his chairmanship of the Tana Forum and the Brain Trust Foundation. He was most recently appointed as the African Union's high representative for the Horn of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about His Excellency, the former president of this great nation. I'm talking about President Olusegun Obasanjo. Can we just put our hands together? His Excellency, Please, at this point in time, please, can we just uh, stay glued to our screen as we yes, listen sir. and watch yeah, it? Time flies. And uh, I like this thing that I've always seen on the, on the um, lorries in Nigeria. Um, the young shall grow. Um, Lucky, who joined me many years back as a, a young graduate with uh, a law degree and uh, having finished his uh, law school uh, training and course uh, came fresh um, and you will be wondering what is a, a young lawyer doing on a farm. Uh, I was 
running the farm, he came in. Um, the young, the slightly older predecessor of his had left, and um, I think he went into he went into banking. Um, and so, yeah, I was on farming, and here is Lucky, a young lawyer. He hasn't had any experience from anywhere. Um, so initially, what I found about Lucky is that He's not diplomatic. That is maybe good and bad, particularly when you want to deal with people from different background, different occupation, which is what you really deal with in, in, in farming. You have to deal with buyers and sellers, you have to deal with uh, some people who are agronomists, you have to deal with uh, some people who are uh, ordinary uh, 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 farmers. Um, and then, of course, we interact with outsiders too. Uh, of course, on a few occasions, is non-diplomatic posture caused me some headache because they reported him to me, <laughs> believing that he was rude. Uh, but it was not out of rudeness. It was just that he is straight talk. You know where you are with uh, uh, Loki. Uh, he doesn't try to turn it this way or turn it that way. Um, of course, that gave me a bit of uh, anxiety about him. But I, I came to understand him, he came to understand me, and I would say that I'm not an easy man to uh, to work with. Uh, uh, Lucky will probably tell you. But, um, uh, and we worked together. He came and he grew in his work on the farm, we have all sorts of uh, challenges, challenges of, I think we pay some people de deposit to supply things which they didn't supply. Yeah. Um, and uh, we had some people on the farm who preferred. Uh, and these are, were some of the challenges that we, we had to cope with. Uh, even the give us, some people give us bad names, that uh, anybody who stole anything on our farm, uh, we kill him, uh, which we did it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but uh, all this we took in, in their, with equanimity. Um, and uh, look, you stay with me for almost 20 years, yes. almost 20 years. And I would say, well, first I congratulate uh, Loki for being able to withstand me for 20 years. And then, of course, I congratulate him now for uh, reaching a mature age of uh, 60. One of the things that uh, I believe uh, he did was also he learned fast and he learned a lot. Um, part of what he has uh, he is engaged in now uh, derived from what he learned working with us on the farm, the little things that we do and how uh, he, he tried to uh, uh, bring his knowledge to actualize his own self-development and ambition. So 
it was a pleasure working with him. And uh, maybe he found it uh, a little bit of a pleasure to working with me. Uh, the fact that any time after that I could call on him, uh, Lucky, can you do this or can you remember this? Uh, and any time he felt like he could call on me or could visit me or could uh, show that uh, after many years that uh, uh, he's gone his way, I've gone my way, including my own part of my way was that I've, in the interim, I've gone to prison. Thanks to Abacha. I, 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 I again want to uh, congratulate uh, Lucky for uh, what he had made of himself. Um, they didn't walk anywhere else, uh, for all I know. Came straight from law school into uh, a farming environment, and then after about 20 years, try to do something on its own, and it done it successfully. That too is worthy of emulation and worthy of congratulation. For me, loyalty has got to be 100%. Uh, that means when you are working, you are working totality, in totality. Um, and loyalty doesn't mean that you cannot argue or discuss or disagree. In fact, if you don't put things on the table for discussion, then that's not, it's not an organization. You must put things on the table for discussion for uh, racing points and all that. Loyalty means that after you have discussed and you have agreed, then everyone must go on what you have agreed. If you have cause to say, oh, look, let us look at this thing again, you come be, you bring it back to the table. Well, in the process of implementing, this is what I have found, or this is what I will uh, suggest should be adjustment. Because as we go along, of course, there may be need for adjustment. Now, loyal, loyalty does not mean that you cannot bring things back for discussion, for adjustment. What it means to me is that loyalty to the organization. Loyalty to the organization. And of course, well, you all have the, come from different backgrounds different backgrounds. Like I've said, I, I know where he first came, uh, he had this, I come from the background of the military. Yes, yes, do this, you do, you agree, do it. Um, and then you see, you salute. Now, he didn't come with, from that background. So, he come from background, background of even arguing. <laughs> <laughs> before, before you put issues. But then, um, and he knows what I will not take. And he will not go beyond what I will not take. And uh, of course, loyalty is also a two-way affair. If you are loyal to, if, an, if employers are loyal to an organization, the organization should also be loyal to the employers and the workers. Um, yes, loyalty is, it cannot be 99%. It has to be 100%. Right. The mm, most important aspect of our nation is the family. Because if the families are families are in disorder, then the community will be in disorder. The locality will be in disorder. And then the nation will be in disorder. And that is why 
say Yoruba. Everything begins from home. Family is a very important component of the nation. Very important unit of the nation. And you must be, if you are a good family man, you are likely to be a good nation man, a good community man, a good uh, local man within your locality. Now, you know, that Yoruba saying is very important. You look at a man, and you even judge people by virtue of the uh, situation in their family. The one who cannot run a family well, and you ask him to come and run a community. You are asking for the impossible. And give me a good family man, I would say, is likely to be a good community man. Give me a good community man. It's likely to be a good man for the nation. But when you know that most of the things he had done for himself after leaving me uh, are manifestations of what he has seen and he has picked up uh, from me or from our organization. Well, that it goes without saying that, well, he, he learned. And not only did he learn, he learned, he put into practice and he succeeded. All right, thank you very much. That was just the, the speech of His Excellency. Uh, Former President Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, thank you very much, and we all heard it. Uh, loyalty, uh, thank you. If you if you are not going to pick anything, you pick that. Thank you very much. Uh, because of our time, I've been told that we need to run. Pardon, sir. Sir, sir, I need to give you something, sir. This one. No, no, no. This one is sir. Take it, take it, sir. It's my sir. Sir, you will need it. You will need to call me soon. That's my card. You, you, you will need my help, so I know. It's not that I'm boosting. something I know. The first number is my direct number. We'll call the second line. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, do, do, we have, do we have an extra video? Is that video ready? Should we start with that? Okay. Uh, please, let's just, uh, now we are... On his family. Okay, yeah, it re is okay. reflected as a result of the goals, dreams, and aspirations he sets for himself and for his family. As a father, you have constantly set the standard very high. We constantly have something to look forward to. We constantly have aspirations, which even though they seem like genius level aspirations, the aspirations that you have found ways to guide us along that path to let us know that it is attainable. As much as I have grown, your voice in my head is constantly there ringing in with the Bible and with words of wisdom, telling me this is the path, walk in it, and guiding me along the right path of life. There's no one else who can cl come close to your fathering skills. You're the most caring and loving person, constantly showing up for us, constantly making sacrifices. You make so many sacrifices, denying yourself of so much so that we, your children, have the best as your child i am grateful to have you as my father i have never for once regretted having a father like you because i know that of all fathers outside of god you are the most amazing i am the person i am today because of your guidance and wisdom and though i might not say it out loud i hope you know how much i love you happy birthday dad and thank you very much. I hope this year brings you more and more happiness. Oh, a round of applause. 
it is going to make me go emotional now. A very emotional person, especially at this period of the year. It's very emotional. No, I just because I'm renewing my rent next month, so I need more thing now. I'm very emotional. I cry easily now. Yes. April now, we are paying school fees, they are renewing rent. Very emotional period for me. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please, can we have, um, because we know that yeah, he's a man of God, so we want to hear from, um, from, the, from the religious aspect, that's from the Christian aspect, please, can we just put our hands together for Dr. Afemayo, a round of applause for Dr. Afemayo for just uh, one, two minutes, thank you very much. All right, a round of applause, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I want to use this opportunity to say happy birthday to my elder brother. Elder Lucky Egede. Happy birthday, sir. And uh, we want to thank God for taking you this far. General Basso just said, loyalty must be 100%, not 99%. I can stand here on behalf of uh, Magodo Church to let you know that uh, it has 100% loyalty to this church and 100% loyalty to God. You know, if I have to share with you all I gain from him, or all this church I've gained from him, I will not live here today. But within the limit of the two, three minutes that I have, this man of God, I can tell you, we have gained a lot from him. You know, I told the gathering, if your pastor is a praying pastor, the followership of that church, there will be a praying church. Long before, most of us in this church, we run through the Todd Mayland Bridge. 5 a.m., come back 7 p.m. But today, 80% of the men in Magodo Church are businessmen. And this is one of the things that we gain from Brother Aloki Igede. He's a teacher par excellence. If you are a member of Magodo Church and you are here and you know that he's a teacher par excellence, put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> he's a Sunday school teacher. Actually, he gained a lot from Obasanjo. He gives us, he talks like the way Obasanjo talks. And give us local example like Jesus Christ to understand what he's teaching. Jesus said it to be difficult for a rich man to pass through, I mean to gain the kingdom of God. Just like for a camel to pass through the needle of an eye. He, he teaches you and every market woman understand him. He's a teacher par excellence. We gain that from you, sir. He gives contemporary examples. For some time now, he has been our Christmas pastor in this church. Only him preaches on Christmas Day. For the past five years, I can remember. So you are not a teacher alone, but a pastor, a businessman, a lawyer, a farmer, and a child of the living God. He was the president of the men at a particular point in time. And we can point to his legacies even as we speak in this church today. He was the president of the men. And when he came out as, when he finished his tenure, he still attends every meeting of the men. Every meeting he attends. Even the last one that we had, he was there. He, he leads by example. We are very grateful to God 
for all that you have done. All our prayer meetings, we had prayer meetings, men had prayer meetings. He is always there. Even as at now, because of COVID, we have prayer meetings on Tuesday between 8 and 9. He is always there. He is always there. You know, one thing, let me just summarize some things that I got from you. He's a man, he's an apostle of choice. He's an apostle of what? Choice. Whatever you become today, he believes it is your choice. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, God has set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He asks you to do what? To choose. He believes whatever, even if you don't have a mother and they born you and your mother died that same day, he believes whatever you come in life is a matter of your choice. He's an apostle of choice. And finally, because I know um, the MC, you, you waste time, so don't, don't touch me. You know, he is, he thanks God for everything. He owns his, whatever he has today, he owns it to God. Every year he comes here with his staff, the 420 for as many of them that are available. And a lot of us are gaining from all this. He said he's the one that gives us the power to do what? To make world. This man owes everything to God. So today, as a member of this church, we want to thank God that you are 60. I never knew you are 60. You don't look 60. I thought I'm older than you. And today, his sister, we celebrate you. We are grateful to God for what he has accomplished through you. And we said, happy birthday. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. A round of applause for the doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let's celebrate our barista, barista of choice. A round of applause. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're next. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, please, can we just put our hands together for Tony Falari? I'm Tony Falari. Thank you. Uh, talking from. Hani Baba Ko, Abara Tomo Yi Omo. Hani Baba Ko, Abara Tomo Yi Omo. Kofi Wa Shere. Kofi wa shere Baba to my yomo Daddy, I say happy birthday to you. I want to talk about uh, Mr. Lucky Gide as an minutes. employer. Hmm. If I stand here and start talking, we won't leave here today. Yes, you have too many. But I have to be very brief. <laughs> Mr. Lucky is a mentor. He's a teacher. He's an instructor. He's a giver. And um, he's a disciplinarian. If you know, you know. You know, at times, I remember when I got employed, far back, some years back now, I had a challenge with the job because of the timing. And I have kids so small. So I was barely two months into the system. And uh, my husband asked me to go and resign because of the late, the timing was wrong. So I spoke to some of my colleagues. There was no solution. I just summoned courage. I went to him. I said, Daddy, this is my challenge. He asked me to see that. I was new, two months into the system. You know, he listened and said, ah, your family first. So he made the job very convenient for me, the timing. And I appreciated that. I refused to resign. Daddy, I want to appreciate you. You don't know what you have done. And I'm very sure every one of us that are staff here have this testimony. You know, I sat back and I thought of something. I said, this man is a very special woman being. He's a very dogged man. You know, he's target-oriented. At times, he tell us, when we want to open a new branch, you say, we are opening so, so, so date. And all of us will be like, ah, will it work out? And before you know it, when we put our heads together, 
you will see us opening that branch exactly that date. He has done it twice. So, anytime we want to open a brand and it tells us that date, everybody does what? Everybody moves towards it and we achieve it. Once again, I say, I celebrate you, sir. Then, I sat down one day, I was thinking, I said, this man is a very special man. I looked at his name. I said, what is in this name, Lucky Egede? And I began to think about it and I realized that the L, the L there stands for leader par excellence. The U stands for understanding. It's an understanding boss. The C is compassionate. The K is a very knowledgeable person. And the Y is youthful. The Egede, the E stands for eloquent. If you know, you know. He's a very eloquent man. Then the G is very generous. Ah, my boss, I give it to you. You know, staff, some of the staffs are here. I have never seen, or somebody will tell me, if you are an employer, you can raise up your hand and tell me when you do declare profit quarterly, you share with your staff. You have a, you have, do I have somebody like that? This man, when he makes the profit, he brings to the table after the salary. Everybody shares and we all laugh. Daddy, I celebrate you, sir. Then the E is very exquisite. The D is a very delicate man and very, very diligent. Diligent. The E, this man is an eagle. He is an eagle. You know, we know the way eagle trains is the train the eaglets. He carries them so high and drop. And is right there to pick the eaglet up. That's what he does. Sir, you are a nation builder. I celebrate you. Please do have a witness in the house. Oh, yes. Do have a witness in the house. Happy Sister birthday, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Madam Tony, thank you. Um, thank you. Immediately I heard that's your special number. I knew that your salaries are paid as at Wendy. <laughs> no, I heard that song. No, I heard that song. No, I, heard that song. I knew, I just knew it. And I wasn't even, I wasn't even looking at the profit sharing. Ah. Oh, thank you, sir. Ah. <laughs> It cannot be when you salary and you are doing that. I know. <laughs> so you have, you have 420 staff now, right, sir? From now on, 421. Sir, don't worry. Don't pay me. Let me just work for you. No, just take care of my children. Don't pay me. That's school fees. It's okay. Thank you very much. Uh, quickly, uh, I want to run. Uh, sir, uh, I have the um, UB representative because they need to go back. They want to quickly... Uh, make their presentation please uh, quickly i would like uh, mr ozioma to quickly uh, come forward a round of applause for uba please let's put our hands together i know it's part of our money but let's see yeah. can I use the mic and please after now you remind me i'll say something about uba Good afternoon, house. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We as UBA, my name is Ozioma. I have my colleagues, Sylvia and Ugochi with me. My name is Ozioma Yanono. I'm the director of UBA. Um, we are glad to be here. We are very glad to be associated with Barrister Loki Egede. Barrister Loki Onyema Egede. We want to say the period we have known him, just like President Obasan just said, he's very straightforward. What he will do, he will tell you. What he will not do, he will tell you. And we also observed, I'm not surprised of what I'm seeing today. I'm not also surprised that the venue of this event is in the house of the Lord. It depicts what we know. Remember our testimony as a bank says a lot about people 
and we know and we stand behind him. I don't want to say that the sky is his footstool. He's going to go further than this. Because if you do your business with truth, honesty, and generosity, of course, God will bless you and make you greater than your equals. And my prayer today for him is that he doesn't have competition. He is going to be the trailblazer. God will continue to give him good health. At 60, he's still looking like a child. And I believe he's going to go further in good health. In sound mind. He will see his children, children. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Ghost. Tony. This is our token of appreciation. I will want to wish you, sir, a very happy birthday to you. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you very much. You be please can we just put our hands together for you be thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The bank that is so big and they are helping our ministry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. One of my friends got it twisted and she was actually trusting God for a husband. And uh, she was very, very specific. And she kept on telling God, God, I want a banker. I want a banker. I want a banker. And he said, which bank? He said, God, my husband must be working with UBA. You know, specific. When you ask him, be specific. He just say, UBA, UBA. And all of a sudden, one brother showed up. Bro, Uchena. Where do you work? UBA. And they started. Please, if this is your car. Ah, the number looks like signature. <laughs> <laughs> is a uh, Toyota Venza EPE 569 HB. They said the two wipers are on. The full, the headlamp, the two are on. If you don't go now, it could affect your battery. Please, you need to go attend to that car right now. Thank you. And you know, so that was our. My very good friend who got married to Brauche now, where the work said UBA, Pia. The courtship was was caught brief. They got married, and you know, today no money, tomorrow Uche now, no money. Ah, uh -uh, he got to a time. <laughs> My friend, he was provoked, said, Ah, every time you saw the way I was before you married me. Ah, uh -uh, after all, you are, you are a staff of one of the biggest banks in Africa. What is even wrong with you every time? You know, the problem started when, you know, when a man starts saying, you know I'm the head of this family, you know I'm the head of this family, <laughs> you need to go and get employed, you know, maybe to go to Lapo or to come to Barista to employ him because his account must be suffering from Kwanshoko Brududus at that point in time. I'm the head. You don't need to argue with it. Amen? Don't argue. You are the head, you are the head. You are the head, you are the not. Ah, it's all the time. The wife was provoked. Ah, every time, no money, no money, no money. After all, you work with UBA. As you not tell you, you be a very big man. I said, uh, then I just smiled. Actually, I don't just work with UBA. I'm the general secretary of UBA. She was provoked. She said, which UBA is your own? She said, this is the question you have asked since. Actually, I'm the general secretary of Umuahia Boys Association. Ladies, you need to watch it. Mommy, tell your daughter, amen. Recently, I was coming, when I was coming, I was trying to get this place because I don't know what happened to my map. 
and I saw one guy, as you know, he dressed well. I said, ah, he said, you just passed my office. I said, where? He said, ah, he said, I'm the managing director of Zenit. Ah, I said, he said, look back. And I look back. Ah, I saw Zenit Babin Saloon. Amen. <laughs> Zenit is Zenit. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, like we have, um, of course, even our bankers, we've heard, we've heard his good testimony. And, and now let's quickly go to our business associate. And of course, you know our guy is uh, also a wholesaler. Ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, can we just put our hands together for Mrs. Sanusi Tosin as she comes to just share her testimony for just uh, one minute. Mrs. Sanusi Tosin, a round of applause, please. Where are you? Let's clap, let's clap. Is she? Please, we don't want us to be in a haste. We have more than enough for us to eat and, um, and drink. Please, just make sure that we have paid for everything. Uh, please, don't worry. Just eat whatever you know the name. Amen. Please put our hands together for her. Thank you, because thank you very much. Good afternoon, house. It's a great pleasure to be here this afternoon. Daddy, happy birthday. Mommy, it's so wonderful to see you today, ma. I've known Mr. Lucky Gede for about 10 years now. And it has gotten to a point that is like a father to me. Anywhere I talk about him, I talk about him as my mentor. Everything I am today, everything my family is, everything my husband is, is because of him. Of course, it's because of God first, then him, and of course our parents. Why did I put him before our parents? Your parents can send you to school. They will not teach you street smarts. They don't teach you how to run businesses. They don't teach you how to make life work. They don't teach you how to be a good husband or a good wife in your home. They don't teach you scriptures. Some do, but not all. He's a man that taught me all the things I'm talking about. He taught me integrity. He's the first person that told me that integrity is currency. It's as good as money in bank. If you have integrity, you can go before men and your integrity will make way for you. He taught me that you don't have to have money to run business. You don't need capital in the bank to run business. You need idea, you need integrity, you need prayer with God. You can achieve anything you set your mind to achieve. When I wanted to start my business, I came to him. Several times I come to him, I tell him, sir, this is the challenge I'm having. He's not a man that will just give you money for the sake of giving you money. If you come to him with the expectation that he's going to write a check for you, he, he doesn't do that. No. What he does is he will tell you how to go about making what you have work for you. And he has done this several times with several examples. I remember there was a day, my husband and I had a business idea that was giving us a headache. And we ran to him on a Saturday evening. And we told him this is what we have. And we need help. He gave us three help. He introduced us to where we could get money. He told us how to run the business. And he took us to where we were supposed to get supplies from and told us that this is what can make this fail. And because of what he did for us that year, I think that was seven years ago. Today, I can attest to the fact that every business we have been able to do, we have used the model that he gave to us. <laughs> Anytime I come to meet him, I say, Daddy, you are a type A personality. You know why I tell him that? Every time I come to him, he will say, I am not opening a branch again. I'm tired. I want to rest. I want to travel. I want to go on vacation. I want to see the world. Not another branch. I will say, by this time next year, we are coming to open another branch. I know you, you can't stop. It's not because of just ambition. It's not stopping because he has a call. He has a cry. He has, he has a passion in his heart. He told me from the beginning. He said, I know the number of people God set in my heart to employ. And until I employ this number of people, I'm not stopping. And I see him striving every day to achieve that. It's not just to make money. He tells me, he said, I'm not doing business because I want to eat or send my children to school. If that's what I want to do, I have more than enough to do that. 
I run business because I want to improve lives. I want to make people better. I want people to sit down and at the end of the month, they are receiving something because they are working somewhere. And this I have learned from him. And this has been the, my ambition and my husband's life's ambition to make people laugh at the end of the month. That he taught me. Another thing he taught me is to be teachable. He's a man that every time I come to him, he's telling me something new he just learned. Something new he just knew about. Oh, you know, I met so so person and he taught me this about business. I'll be like, ah, kilo day. You are still learning at this. Ah, you know everything. And I always come to him with journals. I'm always writing because there's something new I'm learning from him. If you are coming to him, you are not writing anything. You are not learning anything new. Is it that you are, you know, as knowledgeable as the Holy Spirit or you have become so good that, or you are just unteachable? Is a man that keeps learning and that keeps teaching. And another very important thing I've learned from him. Anytime I come to him and I'm leaving, I will learn a new scripture. He actually is one of the first people that prompted me to go and search scriptures about businesses, about making wealth, about making money. He taught me how to do this. I, he tells me some scriptures and I go back home and I'm like, ah, is that KJV or is that a new translation of the scripture? Because I've never heard that before. And I go on to search. So not only is it building my knowledge of business, it's also building my relationship with God. And that I appreciate about him. He's a man that taught me that at the end of the month, everybody that works for you, no matter your circumstance, no matter what you have or what you don't have, Pay your workers. He taught me that. He doesn't hold his workers. I can attest to that. And anytime as a business, because he taught me how to start my own business, and anytime as a business, we do supplies to a supermarket. We have supermarket we supply for six months. We know we are not going to receive our payment from them. But from his business in two weeks, maximum, you have your money in the bank. And because of that, you know that you can continue production. So he's a man that not only is in, in his own way, if everybody, every one of us that does business, if every one of us that are parents, if every one of us that are Christians are behaving like he does, I believe we will have a better nation. He's a man that Thank you. believes so much in God and it reflects in his relationship with people. I celebrate you, sir. Dr. Sanusi celebrates you, sir. Thank you so much for all that you have. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Sanusi Tosi. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I think at this point, maybe I will need to be holding the mic. Amen. Uh, thank you. So I'm a supplier, too. I supply. General supply. Thank you. So you can even one month. I'm fine. I know my money will come. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I'd like to call. Okay, let me quickly call Mr. Ken. Uh, Mr. Ken, then um, immediately after that, I'll call Mr. Olu Dolako Adegun, first group head. Uh, Mr. Ken, are you, are you still around? Okay. Okay, is that Mr. Ken? Okay, right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Please, can we just put our hands together? Thank you. Let me, let me bring the mic to you. So that. Thank you. Thank you. I know you keep to time. I've seen it. Good afternoon, all. Thank you. Daddy, happy birthday. Congratulations. Wow. I have a lot to say about Daddy. That's true. <laughs> I don't know nice. where to start. I'm a supplier and I've been doing business with him for over nine years now. It's been wonderful. And I tell you all the time, it's been a good story all the way. We young people, when we started business newly, we were so scared because of the country and the economy. But with Daddy, all, all his encouragement, all his advice, the way he advised us and encourages us, it has really made us what we are today. I can testify that with all the advice he has been giving us, people like us have been able to succeed in life today. And most times, you supply him product, before you even know it, the money is already in your account. He doesn't waste time before he pays us. And not just that he does business with us, he sits us down as his children, advising us the way to go about things. Even when we have issues, we come to daddy, he will advise us with mommy, 
always giving us good advice on the way to move forward. And he taught us to be, in, to be very, very sincere in whatever we're doing, not to cut corners. Most times people would like go there, bring products that are low quality, you supply and make excess money. But daddy will always encourage us. It's not bringing low quality product. Just stick to that quality product. Even if you're not making much profit, at least be sincere with what you're doing. When you're doing good product, people will know your product and they will keep patronizing you. So he has taught us a lot that I can't really stand here to say everything. Daddy, congratulations and thank you for what you're doing. Thank you very much. I just drop it there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ken. Uh, thank you. Of course, you were, you were really hammering on the advice that he gives you, but I'm sure it's the alert that you... <laughs> Let's be sincere. All right. <laughs> because he said, as a young man, when you want to start business young, you need the advice, but you need capital. I know. I just like to say it as it, you know, that we, you know, we don't, we are not diplomatic. Even though we are trusting God that they will make us diplomat abroad, but for now, that's why I, I did not get, I did not study diploma. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please, can we just quickly welcome uh, Mr. Olu Dolakpo, uh, the Goon Force Group head? I hope I'm right. Is it Miss? Oh, okay. Mrs. Okay, please, Mrs. Olu Dolakpo, uh, the Goon. Round of applause. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was here to look behind, but I was scared. I just thought of Praise God's the Lord. Upset. Thank you. I'm actually home. This is my home. I'm Olu Dolapo Adigo, Group Head, representing First Bank. Um, where do I start from? I'm wearing two, I mean, two cap, really. I didn't get to know it's my blood brother hmm, in Christ. It took a while. I knew him as a customer of the bank, and I'll start with that. And because that's the reason why I'm on this platform. Um, Barista Egede is actually a warm person. Um, there's a guy in the house that introduced him. I met him, and I discovered that he's a customer with a difference. And what am I saying? He knows his onions, and he makes the man. And I like people like that. And um, it's not all about sentiment. It's about getting value for money. And I'm so proud of him, of what he had achieved in the last few years, especially in the branch network. He's a committed um, person. And in terms of a relationship with First Bank, he's the kind of customer that tells you the way it is. He tells me the history of the bank. When he needs to criticize, he criticizes. And when he needs to, um, I, I mean, commend us, he goes as far as doing that. And he owes no bar. He talks to anyone. He sends a mail. And I, I mean, I'm so proud of him. And I thank God for his life that he's 60 years old today. I pray that the Lord will continue to uphold you. And the second cap, I got to know that he's a member of my church here. I'm a member of... First Square Gospel Church, Magodo Zone. So this is our parent church. I don't worship here, but this is our parents. And it makes me, it took a while before I got to know. So irrespective of that, then I got to know that uh, it's a part of the family. But be rest assured, business is business. So nothing about that. And I thank God for his life. I pray that the Lord will continue to uphold you. You will grow in, age, I mean, in strength and in favor with man and God in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you lay your hands on will continue to prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. And that vision the Lord has given unto you will reach the north, the west, the south, beyond Nigeria, global in the mighty name of Jesus. And on the last day you will not be found wanting because that is our journey. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. First group. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. First bank. Okay, first bank. Ah, when I saw First Group. Thank you. A round of applause for First Bank. Amen. Thank you. Because good testimonies about Barista and his businesses. You cannot even say otherwise, even though we look at another bank. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now at this point in time, I would like us, please, the Vensa, please, the owner of the Vensa, please, please go and repack that Vensa, please. Please go and repack. The Vensa I called earlier, please, you need to go and remove your car now, please. You know, this is an estate, please. Thank you. 
Thank you. No, it's not my own. Yeah, I'm not driving Vensa yet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I'd like to uh, quickly call someone. And at the point, of course, we'll still call a, a pastor. Maybe we'll pray for the celebrant and family. Uh, but now I'd like to call someone that, um, you know, of course, we are celebrating barista. And, uh, but there is someone behind, inside. You know, my dad would say, inside every successful man, you know, he's not beside because the Bible says two shall become one. So there is no side any longer. So inside every successful man, there is a woman. Ladies and gentlemen, if your hands are not so heavy and busy, please, can you just put those hands together as I call out here, uh, mommy, assistant celebrant of the day. And I'm talking about Mrs. Segede. Round of applause. Then really after that, we'll call the cake and we pray. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Please, we missed out something in the program, and that's cutting of the cake. And before I do the vote of thanks, please. No, I, I just want, want to, to yes, we'll cut the cake. I said it. I we'll just wanted to do your, maybe just your short speech. Okay. Then, uh, then you now invite your sweetheart okay. so that you can start the service here before you get for second service. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> ah, people are not born again. Thank you. Thank you, ma. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here to thank every one of you for coming. It's, it's amazing. It's really amazing. This young boy you, you are seeing here, he is a young boy, I must tell you. He is a young boy. I don't know about you, but to me, he's a young boy. Yeah. He, he's, he's just too much, I'm telling you honestly. I used to tell him that you think everybody is like you. There are not many of you in this country. And he thinks everybody should be like him. If we have a book to read, before I will read page one, he has read the whole thing. I will say, he will start telling me. I say, I'm still in page one. So visionary. Oh my God, he is. Please give him that hand. Give him that hand. He said, where will you be in 20 years? Where will you be in 50 years? I said, let me finish this year. I've not even finished this year. You want me to be in 20 years? You know, he calculates into the future. He goes deep into the future. There are, I, I used to tell him, I said, my mother-in-law, may her soul rest in peace. He took from the, my mother-in-law. Mama was sharp to the end. 90-something cannot miss it. She cannot miss it. My husband and the brothers, they took from her. She said, my only regret is that I didn't go to school. Even without going to school, her products are speaking for her. Her products are really speaking for her. I want to thank God for this man God gave me. I didn't, I didn't jump, jump in. No. God spoke. The wife, my pastor's wife, was the one that, that day in the church. I met him when I came for youth service. He was in the church. He said, there's somebody here. You want to go home. You want to tell your parents something, but you are afraid. God said, don't be afraid. I'm going before you. Go ahead. And I met him. He said, you want to marry me? I said, my people will say, eh? Which place? You know, I was going home after the church. The, she ran after me and said, you are the one God is talking about. And with that, what do I have to? I, the boldness to go home and tell them I met somebody that I want to marry was just there. We'll fight, oh, let me tell you. I'm not like the type that will tell you we don't fight. We'll fight, but tomorrow we are back. We'll fight, but we'll come back together. I want to thank God. He's, he's a family man to the core. I'm telling you, he's a family man to the core. God gave him to me and I'm proud of him. I'm really very proud of him. I want to tell every one of you here that I'm proud of him. And I want to tell him that I'm proud of him. He put every one of us in the office on our toes. Like, just like Mrs. Folari said. Sometimes I would say, why don't you take it easy? Now we are running too much. He said, have you finished all the ideas on your head? I'm just starting. I want to thank God for this time, for giving him this length of age. Like there's 
what Baba said that was not played today. He said, you are 60, I'm 85. When you will be 70, I will be 95. You will be 80, I will be 105. You will be uh, 90, then you go your own way, I will go my own way. <laughs> that was what the man said. They worked together. You know, Baba Basanja said that for him to have tolerated him for almost 20 years, you know that he's a strong man. Both of them are strong men. I want to thank God. I want to thank every one of you for coming to celebrate this, my darling, for coming to celebrate him. And I pray that God will celebrate every one of you. God will celebrate every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate every one of you. Thank you very much. Amen. Please don't go, ma. Uh, I want you to, to invite your okay. young boy. Okay. You know, romantically, as if you are reading the songs of Solomon. Amen. Okay, now. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Hold him. Uh, I have to. Yeah. yeah. I don't Trust want you. anybody to come near. All right. God gave him to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So. Ah, nice. Okay, uh, now, this, we have a lot of cakes here. We, know we have cake, we don't have room to contain. Amen. And that is how God will bless all of us in Jesus' name. And he will bless you that you have no room again. He said, bring more jars. He said, there is no more jar. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, sir, ma, okay, uh, I know it's the two of you, but... Uh, okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we are going to do it. Uh, we have a lot of cakes there, and this cake is beautiful. And you know, one of the things I normally check when I come for events like this, and you know, to surprise you, just last two weeks I was in Ibadan to host an event like this, order to cut the cake. And one guy just shouted, "Oh, guys, see, ma, get cake in Amalalo, ambe. I confess the sugar coat here, any. But I checked this cake; it's not Amalalo. It's inside." And this city of Lagos, I've anchored an event, wanted to call the cake, and the guy just shouted, MC, make na no call that cake, we rent and we go return them after the event. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, we have more cakes, yeah? So these are our own. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been given the permission to spell the names that is above all names, because the Bible says that the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. So we are trusting God that even now we just spell the name, and as they call the cake, every mountain ahead of them and ahead of all of us will be going down in Jesus' name. And every valley shall be exalted in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no other name that can save, that can deliver, that can bless than the name of Jesus. And that's how we're going to spell this name. And so this is what I'm going to say. When I say J, give me J. Then when we call it, then Jesus, they cut in the cake. All right, are we ready? If you are ready, say yay. Yeah. The yay have it. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, can you give me a J? A yeah. mm. oh, week. Can you give me a J? Ladies and gentlemen, can you give me an E? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can you give me an S? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can you give me a U? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can you give me an S? Yeah. What do we have? Jesus! Hey! Thank you. We are still going to dance. Bisu. We are still going to dance. Just no, no, don't, yeah, yeah, don't go yet. We are still going to dance. Uh, at this point in time, uh, okay, maybe you want to take some personal shot. Um, Daddy, the way I'm looking at you, you are very active. Oh, hello. I know that. I don't know what I'm hearing in my spirit. I don't want to say it. No, no, I should not say it. No, it's not everything you say. Calm down. Thank you. Uh, at this point in time, uh, I'd like to call Pastor to to give us a special prayer. And please, really after now, please, we have not closed. Uh, this is our church. We have decided to do it here. It's not that we can't take it outside, but we know that, yes, we want to appreciate God, and that's how we are. So don't be in a haste. We have more than enough. We have all the courses, first, second, all the courses. Just make sure that you are well cursed. So, Daddy, I'd like to call you, sir, to come and uh, pray, and they'll bless them and bless all of us. Praise the Lord. Um, it's one Arsenal fan handing over to another Arsenal fan. I 
I'll let him talk. Please, before I pray for them, he wants to quickly say something, and then thereafter we'll pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am just overwhelmed. From when I woke up in the morning to do my workout, I normally walk 4.5 kilometers every morning before I, I start my day. I was in front of my street, a Toyota Corolla parked in front of my house. I said, why are you here? He said he was waiting for Ayo. And before I knew it, the cars were four, five, six. Ah. I said, what is going on here? And people started coming out. All managers from all the branches, they came at 6 a.m. with a dance band to come and wake me up in the morning. But I was awake two hours before then. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a very beautiful two hours worship from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. So the party that what we came for at 11 was not the beginning. It was just a continuation of what we started in the morning. And throughout that worship, those who were attentive, we see that I was crying all through, tears of joy, that do I deserve it? Do I merit all of this? That this number of people, just like David said, who am I? that this is happening. Today is Friday, it's a working day, that this number of people left their works to come celebrate with me. I deeply appreciate it. I know that there is no idle person that is here. You are all very busy people. But you have come because of the value you have placed on your relationship with me. And I appreciate it. And God will honor you. And God will bless you. The day of your joy will come. Amen. Your celebration will not be far. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. I just appreciate you. I may not have enough words to say it. But just know one thing. You are all deeply, deeply, deeply and richly appreciated. And God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll have Pastor. Thank you, sir. Shall we pray? Please, if you are not eating, stand with me. Let us pray for him. But if you are eating, please sit down. Continue with your food. If you are not eating, shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we worship you. We join the Egede family to worship you with the art of deepest gratitude that we could muster. We want to thank you for your son whom you have raised up by yourself to impart our generation. Father, accept our gratitude and thanksgiving for him in Jesus' name. We thank you for the family into which you put him to be born. We thank you for the resourceful mother that raised him. We thank you for the brothers and sisters, I mean siblings all around him. Father, we say accept our gratitude for all of them in Jesus' name. We thank you for the children you have blessed him with. They are all doing well. Father, accept our gratitude in Jesus' name. And we want to thank you for the businesses you are raising through him to make our generation better. Father, accept our gratitude in Jesus' name. We pray for you with all our hearts. Your days will be long in Jesus' name. Just like Oba Sanjo has said, we pray that that which is the number of years you want, 120, the Lord will give you in the name of Jesus. And until the time you are called up, you will be flourishing in the name of Jesus. Men will answer when you call one, a million will answer in Jesus' name. When you speak in Nigeria, it will reverberate all over the world in the name of Jesus. The Lord will open doors to your children that has not been opened to anyone in Jesus' name. And we pray that your heart for God will never, never become cold in Jesus' name. We pray for your wife that God will continue to bind you together in Jesus' name. Together you will make heaven in Jesus' name. And for all of us who have come here today, we are praying that the day of our rejoicing, people will be there to rejoice with us too in Jesus' name. And for those who have not known Jesus, we are praying that by, that by the testimony of Lucky, they will know you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. 
Lucky, the Lord bless you. Uncommonly, the Lord favor you. The Lord makes his grace to shine, I mean, his face to shine upon you. And his grace will establish your generation in the name of Jesus. Father, bless him by yourself and take all the glory. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. When we'll be going to our homes, we are sure, Father, you will take all of us safely home. Thank you, blessed God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please sit down to be served. They're just serving food now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we want to appreciate all our guests, uh, people from CIPM. Thank you very much. Uh, director, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you. And please, the party has just started. Uh, please don't be in a haste to go. We're opening the dance floor right about now. Ladies and gentlemen, as I hand you over to the ministry. Okay. Want to take some um, pictures so that we know that, yes, you came. So want to take some shots. Uh, even while we are doing that, I'll hand you over to one of the best DJs in town. DJ, please.
All right, thank you. Uh, please, a uh, photo session now, please, so that we can we can clear the stage and we can just run with it. Our uh, family, family. So that we can manage the space that we have. Can we have family first? Family of Barista. Then after that, we can have friends, business partners, friends. And please, after you've taken your shot, please you can go back to your seat and enjoy your meal. DJ, can you just break it down a little bit? All right. Uh, please, we want to take it session by session. So please, now I'm not sure if family has taken, if family has not taken, let family then, family go sit, then we can have, we can now be calling others. So that we can capture everyone standing i immediately after you after you've taken after you have been shot sorry after you have taken your own shot <laughs> you can you can go we can't capture please i've just been told that the rapture we cannot capture everybody so we need to break it Ma? So we can break this. So, all right. Alpha, are we good? Thank you. So next, next batch. Please, we don't want the queue to be too long so that there won't be an, there won't be argument after that. He said, I, I was there now, but you're not showing sure I was there now, so that's why I want to break it. So that when you are there, we capture you. Okay. okay. And immediately after now, your number one bank. Stanley Bank will be taking their own shot with barista and family. So we have another session now. If you've taken, you can go back to your seat, enjoy your meal. We have more than enough. Just back on our ushers and you will be served. And I've not forgotten my empowerment. I want to empower three women with 100, 100 Nera each. Please, we need to do it in such a way that 